Hello, good evening and welcome. If you can hear me, let me know in the chat. I'm flying solo tonight. It's scary. Mike's not here. He's had the temerity to go out. So um, YouTube's telling me I'm live. Uh, I'm just hoping that somebody in the chat will tell me I'm live. So I'll say hello in the chat. And uh, hopefully somebody is there. I, I can see there's people watching. So do say hello to me. Right. What you should be seeing is a poster for tonight's event. That won't look any different than the poster that was already there. And um, we'll be getting going at the top of the hour. So we've got six minutes to chat. So if you've got questions, put them in the chat. Mike's my other half, by the way. Uh, we do Mike Bites together. So uh, if you don't know me, uh, quick, quick intro. Ah, good evening, everybody. Excellent, excellent. That's fantastic. I see lots of people. It's that delay, you know, it'll, it'll be the death of me. It will. Right, I'm going to zoom into this chat so I can see it even better. Excellent, excellent. Good evening, everybody. Who's bought Affinity Publisher? I had it before it was actually out. <laughs> I placed my pre-order um, with the beta thing. And um, it was there exactly when they said it would be at four o'clock yesterday. So downloaded it, got the final version installed and then sat down, feet up and watched Affinity Live. So who watched that? Let me know. It was a um, short presentation. It was about 45 minutes, I think. When Adobe do one of these things, they go on for hours and hours and hours. And we're all begging them to stop by the end. Um, but Affinity left me wanting more. It was like, no, don't go away. Show us more. Show us more. So I think they did it just about right. Oh, good. So lots of people have already bought it. Excellent. Excellent. Who's been using the beta? Funny story with the beta. They promised it by the end of August last year and they delivered. It was the 30th of August and I had a job to do and I was putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because it meant venturing near InDesign, which was the place that this particular document had been. But that's not the point. And it came out and um, then I got this this rush thing that was like, come on, come on. And um. It came out and I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to do it in that. And I did. And um, I sent, sent uh, I took a picture of it and put it out on Twitter. And Affinity came back and said, wow. <laughs> so I was rather pleased. Uh, since then, I've done, I've, I've actually used it as if it was a production app. The only thing that, that really gave me grief was um, originally with the beta, no linking. Couldn't put a link in it. And this particular job I had to do needed a link. So I thought, fair enough, I'll go back to Keynote, which was what I did when I needed to put a link in. And I went back to Keynote and Apple had broken it. Couldn't put a link in anything to save my life. Luckily, they've dealt with that. So um, lots and lots and lots to see tonight. Who's seen the other video that I've done? The one for the beta that I did last September. It was an hour 26. There was a lot of it unbelievably, because I sat and watched it today, <laughs> I thought, do you know, I could talk for another hour and 26 and not actually mention any of the stuff that I mentioned last time. Don't intend to, uh, but I will take questions. So if you've got questions and stuff, let us know. Now, uh, try to watch it, but no sound. Oh, that's not good. Uh, there is sound. If you're talking about that video I was talking about, there's definitely sound on it. There is, because I saw it. Yes, with that one, we did the office stuff tonight. I thought we'd um, I've got that data in case we need it because I'm going to take questions. So you've got a question. Just throw it in there. Throw it in there. Um, but I thought we'd concentrate on the newer features and the things that have changed. Quite a lot's changed. And there is, of course, the drop dead stop everything and, and wow at this feature, which they announced last night, which you may be aware of. But there's a couple of caveats with it. So when I talk about it, I'll be giving you the skinny on how to deal with it when it all goes awry. And one last thing before we actually get going that's inordinately funny as well. I have a checklist for when I'm training and on my checklist, it says check the batteries in the mouse and keyboard. Well, that goes back to the days when it had batteries in it that you could swap. So I'm working away quite happily. And 10 minutes ago, my mouse stopped working. 
Well, they were expletives uttered as I realised I need to change that to check it 24 hours before. Not a problem. Did I mention Mike was out? Mike doesn't have a mouse anymore. I've got it. (laughs) Poor Mike. Mine's on charge. So um, I definitely need to change that checklist, don't I? You shouldn't have to think about a demonstration 24 hours before you do it. But I didn't get any notification from um, Apple in the notification centre that my mouse was about to die, but it did. It died. Always good when a presentation starts like that. All I can say is the worse it is in rehearsals, hopefully the better it'll be live. Uh... Oh, right, Deb, I'm with you. Right. I had that same problem. I was watching it in Opera, a different browser. Rationale was whenever I try and watch something like that, I always go and try and do something else. Um, And I thought I don't want it in the browser that I'm inevitably going to lose the page when I go and do something else. And I had the same problem as you. There was no sound. So I opened it up in Firefox, which is my primary browser, and I had the sound. So I'm cursing on and saying to Mike, this is ridiculous. When all of a sudden I got it in stereo. So I closed it in Firefox and the sound did come on in Opera. Luckily, it is available on YouTube. It's definitely worth watching. Um, As I said, you just you were left wanting more, which is usually the way to go. That's the way to leave people, I say, wanting more. She said when she prattles on for over an hour. But you get the idea. So it's definitely worth seeing. Um, It's always good to hear it from them and what the rationale was. But I will cover some of what they talked about. Uh, but I will still watch it. Definitely still watch it. Um, Affinity be being fantastic with me. I'll talk about that when I talk about how to actually buy the software. But it is the top of the hour. So you need to see my desktop, don't you? It won't be good if you can't. So you should be seeing my desktop. I'll get Keynote up. And then you'll be seeing a slide again. Oh, that's the plan. Excellent. It looks all right in my end. Okay, so it's the top of the hour. I'm going to go quiet for a fraction of a second. (laughs) Blessed relief for everyone. Uh, Reason being, I'll edit out this bit at the beginning from the video when it processes. Otherwise, people get very sniffy, you know. If they're not here live for, for the chat, they get a bit sniffy. The only problem with doing that is I think we lose the chat if I edit the video. But I'll have a copy of it anyway. So if there's any, if, if you throw your questions in, if I don't get round to them, I will come back to you uh, with answers for that. So I'm going quiet and then I'll be back. Hello and welcome. Tonight we're looking at Affinity Publisher. <sighs> For those of you who don't know, I'm Elaine Giles, longtime trainer, podcast host, inveterate geek. And my YouTube channel is where you'll find tips, tricks and full training sessions for a huge range of apps. But my favourite and my absolute favourite at the moment is Affinity Publisher. The good few reasons for that, which I will cover. Um, We've waited a long time, but it's here. And when I say we've waited a long time, we were waiting a long time before we even got our hands on the beta. And we've been using um, the beta for 10 months. But it's finally here. It's here for Mac and it's here for Windows. Now, when it comes to purchasing, you have two options. You can buy from the App Store. Now, when I say the App Store, I usually mean the Mac App Store. But there is a Windows App Store as well, and you have the opportunity to purchase it from an App Store. You also have the opportunity to purchase it directly. Now, I noticed when um, they announced it that it was actually going to be released yesterday. They were offering a discount on the App Store of 20% and 30% directly. Now, hang on. When I said on the App Store, whoa, just a minute. They were offering a a discount for beta purchases of 30% on the direct purchase and 20% for pre-orders. But it wasn't available for pre-order via the App Store, which I'm pretty sure I have seen. When I was thinking about it, I thought maybe that was the iOS App Store. But it certainly wasn't available for pre-order on on my App Store. Um, It is available now. And there is still the 20% discount. So it's $38.99 or $39.99. Now, which should you buy and why? Well, 
my version of the Mac version of Designer and Photo was from the App Store. And my Windows purchases were direct from Affinity. So that's where I am in relation to where they were from. I don't really have a preference. The difference is going to be managing a license. If you buy direct from Affinity, you're going to need a license key and you're going to need to manage that. It's also a fraction more difficult to install. But if you're on a Mac, it's not that tricky. And you may want to do this. You may want to download it from Affinity because you can get a trial. This is what happens when you do that. You reach a point where you say, I have a product key or start my trial. Now, I did have a product key. It was available at four o'clock, exactly as they said it would be. And I had problems purchasing with my beta discount on two platforms and Affinity dealt with it for me. Steve was amazing and it was all sorted out. So I was able to put my license code straight in there. You'll notice there is a big blue button. You need to validate your product key. Now, I instinctively thought, ah, it's activated. Apparently, it's validating a key. Now, how it knows it's you and how many validations you're allowed. Well, we'll see, won't we? Um, but that's the way I went. So once you've done that, you are almost done, but not quite. Because the next step is you need to agree to the license and you can't hit the accept button until you put a tick in the box. I thought the box was a smidgen on the dark side and nearly missed it. But once you've done that, you're done. Your alternative is to buy it from the App Store, in which case it's really simple. You see the price at the top right hand corner. Just click that and you're done. <laughs> it will all install, etc. What I actually intend to do, I'm going to buy both. <laughs> it's already been worth its weight in gold to me. Um, and I do that with products where I want the benefit of having fast updates, so direct from the developer. But I also want the benefit of if I'm out and I'm on somebody else's computer, just quickly being able to install it and then delete it when I've finished without fiddling around with keys. So that's what I will, in, it will do when, when I finish this. Right. Why Affinity Publisher? Why is it so important? Well, I've said this when I did the last session. There is lots to love. Now, if you're on live with me, tell me how you're using it. Uh, a lot of you have already said you've already bought it. What are you using it for? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, the importance of it prior to yesterday's announcement. Now, yesterday's announcement was not just that Affinity Publisher is here. It was way bigger than that. And I will talk about that. But yesterday's announcement um, hangs off the fact that there are now the three products in the Affinity Suite. Designer was first, then photo, then publisher. And it always was Serif's intention to create a fuller suite of applications and publishers like the third piece. At this point, people usually ask the next question because designer, photo, publisher available on desktop, designer and photo available on the iPad. So the next question is, is Affinity Publisher coming to the iPad? It is. We knew it was. They've said for 12 months it is. Yesterday they confirmed it should be with us in 2020. Do not hold me to that. Do not hold them to that. <laughs> because, you know, you know what software development is like. Having said that, they've got two applications on the iPad. So they're in a better place to potentially stick to a, a more accurate time frame. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Now, I briefly mentioned before we actually started recording that I've already done a session on Affinity Publisher. This one was the beta. Um, it was a long session. It was an hour 26. And a lot of the features that I covered in that have not changed. Many, many of them haven't changed. I do not intend to just repeat that. Because a lot of you might be thinking, well, I've seen that. Is it worth my while staying? It is. It is. We're going to look at different things. We're going to look at the things that came up on the beta. Um, this session will focus on the features that were added during that beta. So without further ado, let's head off and have a look into it. We are going to head back to slides for a fraction of a second once we've got going. But there is a valid reason for that. But for the moment, let's head out and get into Publisher. So I've uninstalled my beta. And uh, it, it always opens half on one screen and half on the other. I've actually got three screens here. I'll be turning my webcam on later as well because I've got some printed stuff to show you. So I can show you all the monitors if you like. 
Right, this is what you see when you open Affinity Publisher. So first thing, they're giving you a freebie. They are giving you a freebie. You can claim a free font collection. Now that font collection, if you bought directly from Serif, was available for download in the same place as you downloaded your installer. But this is the welcome dialog. I've left this so you can see it. Um, but you don't need this showing on startup all the time. You can take the tick out of the box in the lower left hand corner and hide that, which I must admit, I do do. However, as you've just seen, they're giving you free toys there. And you would miss that if you didn't have this dialogue box showing. So if you do take the tick out of that box or close it, you can always get back to it through help welcome. Always worth checking that once a week, I think. Once a week would, would definitely be worthwhile. Now, you can do two other things from in here, as well as create a new document, and they are worth doing. First of all, you have samples. So if you click on the samples, there are two samples available. Now, I have pre-downloaded these, Rationale being the 200 meg and 11 meg. And I don't want to stress this connection any more than absolutely necessary when I'm going live. So one's a lifestyle magazine and the other is a trifold brochure. So let's have a look at that one. Once you've downloaded it, it sits there and you can open it up at any point you choose. So looking at this, this is the file that was used in the demo yesterday. You may remember those images. So it's a, a fantastic starting point for you to explore um, somebody else's file, see how they work. And I find that really useful. Uh, there's lots of different styles in this magazine, as you can see. So um, definitely have a look at it. My one thought was, whoa, that text's small. <laughs> but there's lots to see and do in there to um, explore it. Have a play around with it. See all the features. Now, I'm going to close that one down because that was quite big, wasn't it? Go back to help welcome. And there's the trifold one. So much smaller, just two sides, uh, front and a back of that and um, a different kind of layout. Again, it just gives you something to sort of click and think, oh, what's going on here? How have they done that? You can actually click through. The whole thing is editable. I guess if you wanted a, a brochure that was similar to that, you could just delete their content and use the framework for your own. So definitely worth having a look at that. The other thing that's in that welcome dialogue, why is she spending more than two, two seconds on a welcome dialogue? Really simple uh, because let's get back to where we were. Oh, home. There we go. Um, there's lots in here. That's why freebies, samples and also tutorials. So if I click on the tutorials there, that will actually open up in a browser, which is opened up on one of my many external monitors. There it is. And there are 47 videos. They will take you a while. I've watched everyone. Trust me, they will take you a while. Some of these are 15 minutes long, 17 minutes long, and there's 47 of them. They are very good and they are segmented in such a way that if you're specifically looking for something, so maybe you're interested in kerning and tracking, then there's a four and a half minute video on just that. OK, so that's what you've got from that welcome dialogue. The last thing you have in there is the ability to make a new document. So I am going to click on new document. And you get this new document dialogue. Now, this has changed since the original beta. Um, I, th I would say it's improved greatly, greatly. I will be looking. So I'm looking at the questions that I've got here. Good to see what everybody's doing with it. Uh, you're all using a lot of different apps already as well. Liking the idea of doing calendars. I'm th seriously thinking of doing calendars myself for the first time this year. I've done calendars before, but I pretty much stuck with um, iPhoto years ago and had them printed by Apple. Will there be an iPad version? Yes, there will. Is Studio Link only in Affinity? Uh, Studio Link, I am about to show you. As soon as I've shown you the interface, I'm going to show you that because that is the biggest thing that's been announced. Uh, is Studio Link only in Publisher? Well, if I show you what it does, um, we'll see why it looks that way. It makes most sense that way. So I'll show it to you. So um, as Andrea says, or Andrea, got to be careful there. <laughs> in England, that would be Andrea, <laughs> but it could well be Andrea. Uh, yes, it's coming next year, hopefully. Right. So your new dialogue box. 
new document. First thing to think about is the type of document. Is it print, press ready, photo, web, devices? Uh, and you've got presets as well in there. So with your presets, you can create your own presets. Now, I'm pretty much sticking with print for what I do. I'm going to create an A5 brochure because I've been working extensively in A5 at the moment. So I'm choosing A5. That gives me a document unit of millimetres. Now, this is a new one since the beta, the original beta, which is image placement policy. When you place images in Affinity Publisher, you could either embed them or you could link to them. Now, there's benefits of each. Uh, I've seen linking and embedding in a million different apps. I, I did a Microsoft exam years ago on Access, which is a database, and there was a question whether I should link or embed. And the correct answer in the real world was link. And Microsoft's answer was embed, but we won't go there. <laughs> now, the difference is here. If you embed all your images, that's brilliant for portability. You take your single Affinity Publisher file with you and what you need is with it. Um, if you link, you have the benefit of a smaller Affinity Publisher um, file and the ability to externally update the images. So that sounds fabulous. The downside to linking is if we link and you lose an image, you're going to have a problem with the document. I tend to embed, unless I'm making a document that's absolutely huge, or, or a document where a client is going to be sending me a million images after the event and changing the images and all kinds of things. So I pretty much stick to embed unless there's a reason not to. Your mileage may vary. Right. OK, um, I'm broadcasting at 720 because I'm broadcasting. Basically, I'm broadcasting it live. So that's why I'm going out at 720. I am going to have a local video that's going to be a much better quality, which I will make available after the event. It's purely because I'm going live. And when I go live to YouTube, if I try and do it at 1080, YouTube gets very upset. And then it starts stopping and stalling and all kinds of things. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, there's only really this dialog box uh, that's ultra tiny. I think after that, it'll be the data that I'm working on. Maybe if you did a refresh, it may be better. Hopefully it will be. Right, then underneath that, you've got the number of pages. So you can add pages later. But if you know how many pages you're going to need, then you can do that at this point. So I might decide to add eight pages. You have the option for a default master. A master page is like sort of a template, but a framework template. It's not content. It will provide you a framework for creating pages. And you have the option to make a default for that. Then based on what you've selected in the page preset, you'll get your page width height and you can choose a DPI. There is a checkbox whether it's portrait or not. I always find that's quite odd. Why not just have portrait? landscape option instead of a ticking portrait, because by definition, you take it out and then it's landscape. But that's just me. Then you have an option for facing pages and how you would like to arrange those pages. Now, in this one, I do want facing pages. Because I've got a document that I've been working on, didn't think I'd get it finished, to be honest, before um, tonight, but I did. So I can actually show you the printed copy. So therefore, I'll make this in facing pages and you'll be able to see the printed copy. And it was arranged horizontally and it did start on the right hand side. So basically, it is um, an A5 brochure. It's got three pieces of A4 folded in half. And th thus it has one, two, three, four, five. Six. It's got 12 pages. So I'm lying to you. <laughs> I've said eight. Actually, I went crazy and did 12. So. I've set that up in there. Now, at this point, I've looked at the layout, not looked at the color, but you have color options in there. You can have transparent backgrounds. You can change color format. That's going to depend on your output. I left it alone at RGB because I was just having it printed off a, a local color laser printer. Then you've got margins. Now, the margins here are 
an inch, which is 25 millimetres, an inch, another inch and a bottom one of 30, which is fine if it's A4. But mine's A5 and that's going to be far too much. So I'm actually going to take the opportunity in here to change them. But look what happens. I want three that are 10 and one, that is, one that's 15 and I'd have to type it all in. So actually you can cheat here. If you click that icon on the right hand side, which is a chain icon and put in there in any one of them, they all change. But I want a different bottom margin. So once I've done that, I'm going to unlink and I'm going to put 15 in there. So just a fraction quicker. I'm not going to retrieve my margins from the printer because the printer I print on isn't attached to my machine. I will be making a, a print ready PDF. Uh, and the last one is the bleed. And I'm not going to have a bleed because it's just being printed to a standard printer. I do have documents that have a bleed and I can show you that if you need to see it. Right. And then you just click OK and that's it. You're ready to go. Literally at that point, you are ready to go. I will quickly show you what the finished artwork looks like that I have created, which is a program I have created. Uh, I'll show you the final one. Uh, it's this one. Hang on, where are we? Uh, right. We are having an event called President Sunday um, on the 30th of June, and we have got a 12 page brochure that is going to accompany it. And this is it. It, it was finished today. Ha! How alarmingly early is that? I am 10 days in hand. It's a miracle. Right. It's got text in it. It's got images in it. That's Mike there. We do love to have a good time, as you can see. So there's a good few pages of images. There they all are. There is also uh, some previews of upcoming events. We have lots of events. We do like to have a good time. So let's just go in there, see all of those. Uh, there's more text towards the end, which is our full year's program. And because this is a meal, the program is accompanying a meal. There's grace uh, before and after meals at the end. So that's the document. And it was all created in here. That took me. Well, <laughs> it only came out yesterday, didn't it? If I'm honest, I had four pages of that done already. But the rest was done last night. I will admit, didn't get to bed till four o'clock. <laughs> but hey, you can never have too much fun, can you? Not when you've got new software toys. So that is the brochure. Now, what I'll do is I'll go back to the basic one that we've just created, this blank one, just to show you the interface. Not much has changed since the original beta. So if you've seen my original video, some things have changed, but it, it's minuscule. For instance, these three icons have changed what they look like. That's nothing compared to what they've changed in how they work, which I'm going to come on to. But the rest of the toolbar, uh, I will show you the features on there as we work through it, because at the moment, most of them are disabled because I haven't got any content. Below that, you have a context sensitive toolbar, the content of which will depend on the tool you have selected down the left hand side in the toolbar. As you can see, as I make different selections, I mean, look at that pen tool. There's so many options there. They all change depending on what you are actually doing in the tool there. Now, now I'm, I'm opening up things that I don't want to do. OK, so this is your tools down the left hand side. In the middle, you have your canvas. That's your document and you can scroll it and you've got special view options as well that you can use. But pretty, pretty straightforward and you can navigate using this here as well. But I'm going to come back to that. At the bottom, you have a status bar. And I always say with the status bar, I ignore it. I pretty much ignore it. But if you're new to an application, do keep your eye on it because it's actually giving you useful feedback. It's telling you to drag to make a selection. So, for instance, if I had objects on there and I had my move tool, which is this one up here, selected. It's saying drag to move selection, click another object to select it, click on an empty area to deselect. So if you're looking for help, that is giving you context sensitive help at the bottom. So I can draw around them like it told me I could. Don't forget the status bar. Right now, the rest of the interface, which is the bit on the left hand side where you can see the pages and the right hand side where you can see all sorts is called the studio. So if I go into view and down to studio, the studio is a collection of panels. 
And these are the panels you will interact with as you're working with Affinity Publisher. As you can see, there's a lot of them turned on, but there's also some that I will be using that are not turned on. So if you're looking for a, an option and thinking it's just not there, do go to View Studio and make sure that there is a tick in the box, well, a tick next to the item for whichever one you are looking for. Now, down the bottom of this, a couple of interesting points. You can show the studio on the left and you can show the studio on the right. And in Publisher, I recommend you do that because if you don't, you will have trouble navigating because you won't be able to see the pages option unless you move the pages over to the right. And if you do that, then you won't see anything else. So in Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, sometimes I turn the left one off to give myself a little bit more room to move. But in Publisher, I always leave it on. So by default, they are both turned on in Publisher. Uh, you can hide the studio entirely with that option there. And then they all go away, which means you won't really be doing much. But it's quite handy if you wanted to actually work um, on the document and give yourself the maximum space. However, you'd have to remember the shortcut key, which was Command, Shift and H. There you go, on and off. But you also have the tab key. And if you press the tab key, the whole lot disappears, which gives you a nice view. Uh, you can use the tab key to bring it back. Now let me show you using the other file because the darker border on the inside is actual content. The lighter border on the outside is marking the area for the margins. So I can press tab and that's all very well, but I've still got that blue border. I'm not actually seeing that as it would be if it was printed. But if I use Control and W, and that's Control on Windows, Control and W, it hides all of that. So it disappears. And if I use that in conjunction with the tab and Command and Zero, then I've got a fantastic view of my file. And I can look at the whole thing and get a really good view of how that will look when it's printed. This is a booklet, as I've said, so those pages are actually in the right order. One thing I had to do before Publisher was I had to design this manually with the pages in the right place. It was a nightmare, a total nightmare. Um, today, I've been actually able to prove that it does print off absolutely perfectly from Publisher via a print ready PDF, which is Awesome. That's meant the staple in the middle lines up. Staple in the middle did not used to line up and that's important. So those are just a couple of view options. Control and W. You can see the frames coming back there and the tab key to bring back the interface. Command and zero to show what you're looking at fitted into the canvas area. Right. That's the interface. Now, once we've done that, need really to go back and have a look at the other stuff, don't we? Right. The thing everybody is getting very, 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 very excited about is these options at the top here. Now, let me know in the chat if you're with me live, who knows what a persona is? In Affinity, who knows what a persona is? Because all bets are now off. <laughs> personas have become bionic personas. So what I intended to do was whip back into my presentation just to explain something. Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher all have their own file formats. On your system, if you can see the extension on a file, you will see AF Design, AF Photo and AF Pub. Or it could be Publish. I think it's Pub, though. Right. But the thing is, they are not separate file formats. They look like they are and they have different icons. And if I double click on a designer file, it will open in designer. If I double click on photo, it will open in photo. But the fact is, underneath the hood, they are one and the same. The entire file format is unified. Why is that important? Well, it, unless you're a huge geek like me, you might think you don't care. Why do you care? You care because of what was announced yesterday, which is Studio Link. Studio Link is an entirely different way of working with design applications. Let me explain what that means to you. That's the interface of Affinity Publisher. We're looking at the top right, uh, top left hand corner where we have those icons. Those icons, these ones. 
Now, when you have the one on the left pushed in, which is the default, that gives you your publisher tool set. It's all the tools that you need to work with a print layout. That's what it's about. If you push the middle one, you do not move out of publisher anymore. You stay exactly where you are looking at exactly the same document, but now your interface has become Affinity Designer. It's your designer tool set. And guess what the third one does? It again leaves you with your document, but the entire interface switches and becomes Affinity Photo. Caveat on that, you are going to need for that to work those applications installed. So it isn't a case of you buy a publisher and then you get everything else free. As long as you have the three applications installed, you will be able to seamlessly work between them. That was the huge announcement last night. And they actually said that's why the Serif suite of apps is called Affinity. That they are one and the same in file format and they are integrated to a level we have never seen before in applications. We've seen round tripping where you take a file from designer and you take it to photo and you edit it in terms of pixels. And then when you're done, you take it back. We've seen all of that, but we've not seen anything as tightly integrated as this. This is a game changer. However, into every life, a little rain, or in this case, confusion must fall. It's a little gotcha. It's very easily fixed. But when I tried this, I got this. I opened up my purchased version of Publisher and the first thing I tried was the designer link. And I saw this. I was horrified. <sighs> Let's take a closer look why I was horrified. It was telling me Affinity Designer wasn't installed and Affinity Photo wasn't installed. I can assure them it was. When you look at the instructions, please install and launch your other Affinity apps to register them with Studio Link. Well, trust me, I had done. I live in them. They're open all the time. So I closed them and I closed Publisher and I opened it up again and I tried again and I still saw that. I was horrified. Now, there, there is a reason why that happened. This is the reason why that happened. You need the very, very latest version, which is 1.7.1. I had updated yesterday at half past three. They weren't there yesterday at half past three. They were there yesterday, however, at five past four. So both your Affinity Designer and your Affinity Photo. Now, I've shown you that in the Mac App Store, but wherever you get them from, direct from Affinity or maybe you're in the Windows App Store, you need the very latest version. So I installed the very latest version. Guess what? Perfect. It just worked. Um, I did run them. And then I went back and the dialog box had gone and everything just worked. OK, so let's get back into the software and actually have a look what that actually looks like. Now, we've already got um, a question, which is need to know if this bloats the files. No, it doesn't, because the file, although it has a different extension, really the extension is just there to determine which app opens it when you double click on it. And that is the only reason that there is a file extension. Other than that, the files are exactly the same. So no, it doesn't. It's not adding extra information into it so it can do some black magic. It's just the same file format. Is the pixel persona within Affinity Designer equal equivalent to Affinity Photo if you've purchased both? Not at the moment. No, it's not. Um, the pixel persona because although the, the, are these really personas, uh, this is something different. As It says designer persona and it says photo persona. But what it is actually doing is completely different. So, no, the pixel persona isn't. Here's one difference for you. The repair tools that you have are less in the pixel persona than they would be if you took the file into a photo. So there's one example. Yep, the file formats are actually amazing and they've been like that since day one. Who knew? Um, I've actually had a, a bit of an issue. This is a slight aside. I'll take 30 seconds and explain a problem to you, uh, just in case you might be aware of it. I've got um, my folders in 
iCloud. And I'm going to go into this view so you can see them. I have in here, oh, what on earth have you done here? I don't want them sorted by that. I want them sorted. No, I don't want that. I want them alphabetical is what I want them. You going to be alphabetical now? Oh, well, be awkward then. Be awkward. Let me do a sort by name. That's better. Right. Problem I have here, I have my Affinity Designer folder and I have my Affinity Photo folder. Notice the deliberate mistake that's not deliberate. There's an error. Uh, and the problem is Affinity Photo works brilliant. It's got the Affinity Photo icon. If I go into Affinity, let's go into Affinity Photo and let's just find a photo. Oh, how about that one of me dressed, <laughs> dressed as Darth Vader? Oh, why not? Let's download that one. Right. You can see that's an AF photo file. If I double click it, it opens up in Affinity Photo eventually. There, it's thinking about it. Poor machine struggling. There's me dressed as Darth Vader. I made that. I made that hat. That was amazing. That, that helmet and that little chain that you can see around there. That was off a bath plug. Ah, uh, needs must. Yes, I made that. So that was Affinity Photo. That's exactly the, the behavior you would expect. The problem I've got is in my Affinity Designer folder, it's got the photo icon. When I go into it, I have got here all kinds of files. There's my after hours icon. If I right click and show you on the get info, it says opens with Affinity Photo. Why? Look at the extension. It's an AF design file. Well, that's all right. I'll go in here and what on earth's happening? What's happening? Affinity Designer is the default. I know it is. But if you're on a Mac, you know what to do. Just select the one you want from in there. It's not working. Twang's back. I can do that all day. It won't make a difference. It's just a fault. If I double click on this file, even though it's a designer file, I will double click on it from the designer folder, a designer file in the designer folder, and it opens it up in photo. I've actually done this and carried on editing the file for 10 minutes before I realized it's opened in the wrong app. The file formats are absolutely identical. They are one and the same. There is a fix for that. I'll point you to a video for that later for that. Please note that does not happen anywhere but iCloud. So that after hours icon there, let's take it and drop it on my desktop. Not in there. Let's get it on my desktop. So I'm moving a copy of it to my desktop. Right click on it. Bring up uh, the thing. You can see AF design file. Now it's saying it's going to open it with designer. Well, let's see what it does. Does it open it with designer? It does. There's designer. Let's take that full screen and there's my file. What's it doing? It's iCloud. iCloud's having a moment is what the problem is. That's what the problem is. It's just iCloud. As I say, there's a fix, but that is how integrated those file formats are. They are identical. They are one and the same. Right. OK, so our file here. Right. Let's see how, what this means to us. Well, let's go and get a, a, an image here. Let's say we wanted to change one of these images. Uh, what could we do with one of these images? There's one of Mike looking rather alarming. There we go. Now in Publisher, I can select the frame. It's a picture frame and it's got a picture in it. But as I look at the tools, they're more for page layout than actually doing anything with that file, that image file. But up here, in, with my studio link. If I click on the photo persona, look what happens to the entire interface. It is now Affinity Photo. Everything has changed. The toolbar has changed. The context bars changed. All of the tools have changed. Over here, you can see it, it says macro, but actually I probably wouldn't need that. So if I go into studio and I turn off the left studio, I can now work on my image over here. I've got layers, but these are picture frames and I'm actually focusing on that particular image. What does that mean in terms of what I can do with it? Well, it means I could go into here and I could put an adjustment on that. So let's say I wanted that to be black and white for whatever the reason I could uh, make some changes to that. Uh, let's have a look what I can do with it. Uh, just make some radical changes. Oh, he's looking nuclear. All right, let's do that. Let's bring that in. 
and OK. And that adjustment is clipped to that image. But I'm in photo. It was completely painless, wasn't it? I didn't need to round trip it. I'm, I'm just there. But if I go back, look what I've got at the top. It's saying Affinity Publisher. It is. But the tools are completely integrated, all of them from photo. Go back into the publisher persona. And now my image is black and white and I can just carry on working with it. It's that simple. Let's say with this image here, this little bit, we look at what that actually is. That is an Affinity Designer file. If we look here, it's got text, it's got curves, it's got a rectangle at the background. It was copied and pasted from an Affinity Designer file. If I decided I wanted to change that blue to green, I can do that in here. If I wanted to do something more spectacular with it, I can click on the design persona and I'm now in Affinity Designer. So if I wanted to add shapes or whatever I wanted to do with that, I could do that with my full complement of Affinity Designer tools without ever leaving Publisher. The reason that I think this makes more sense inside Publisher is that Publisher and your, your Publisher document is the kind of document where you will include photo elements and you will include artwork. Whereas if you think about designer and photo, they're more utility tools rather than making a final document. So it does make total sense. As far as I'm concerned, it makes total sense. Hopefully it will make total sense to you. That was their huge announcement. They also said, which is very important to know, that this is their words were, this is not the end. It's just the beginning. So one can only imagine how fabulous it's going to be down the line. Now, I don't particularly want to do this right at this moment. I could, <laughs> but I don't really want to. Um, there's something magic about that. This file format business, stay with me till the end. The last thing I will show you will blow your mind. <laughs> I hope. I hope it will blow your mind. It blew mine when I heard about it and I've tried it and it's amazing. So we'll come on to, we will look at the, we will revisit is what we will do. We will revisit Studio Link as the very last item that we do. Okay, so let's get back to our publisher persona and let's have a look at some of the things in here. I do recommend with this video, this session, that you go back to the beta one as well, because the two will complement each other. It's not um, instead of. Now, you still have in here three text tools that you had in the beta. You have the frame text, you have a table tool and into a table you can put text and you also have artistic text as well. So for something like this President Sunday, that would be artistic text. In fact, I'll get that right out of the way. You should at that point notice something strange happened there. I'll bring it back. <laughs> you work out what the problem was. I've got an apostrophe there. There's a reason for that. I'm going to leave the apostrophe where it is for the moment. In fact, you know, I'll get rid of it and the, that will explain why. So I'll go get my artistic text tool. Just click in there and put President's Sunday. Now you'll notice at this point, not the same font and a huge gap. That's because the last thing I did in here, I used Trajan and not this font. Now, the font for the front cover there is called Australia. And if I go and choose Australia, I've got to be careful because I've got Argentina in here as well and Atlantic. Right, Australia. There it is. Now, a couple of things with that. It's way too small, so I'll make the text much bigger. Um, I guess around 72-ish. What size are you? 80. There you go. Let's make it 80. Let's do it right. Uh, and then I would change in here the gap. So the gap's far too much. As I zoom up and down here, I can find a nice gap. So I, I would say around the 100 mark. Uh, not there, in here. Around 100, 110, something like that. Now you'll notice I typed in presidents. Apostrophe. It is the Sunday that belongs to the president. Uh, not there. Where did that go? Well, it is there. If I double click it and I do that, I've got it selected. That font has no numbers in it, nor does it have any special characters, which is the biggest pain you can imagine. 
My workaround is to have another font, which is called Atlantic, which is very similar. Although having said that, that's not good either. That doesn't look great, does it? Um, what I did, how did I format that? I think I must have used a special character, but it is Atlantic. That is Atlantic. So I did it separately in a separate frame and that's what I've got there. So that is also a text frame and I've had to do that literally so I can do that and just put it approximately where it would be. So either above or below that. So somewhere like that or above it. I think I put it above it. It's not ideal, not by a long way, but this is the kind of rubbish you have to deal with. Let's make that blue. So that's frame text. Uh, no, sorry, that's artistic text. This is frame text. So what we've got there is an entire frame that's formatted with the text in it. So if I move the frame, everything moves with it. The text, there's a gap, there's a frame on it. The whole thing is just a frame. So let me show you that one. Let's get that out of the way and I will copy that text. What I did with that was get this tool here and draw a frame on there. Now, I have this toolbar showing, you might not. The default is not to have that toolbar attached to the frame. That is an option that's available from there, the frame text ruler. You can toggle that on and off. I have it on because I can use it for indents and tabs and all kinds of other things. I will then paste in plain text. So it is the same text, but it's plain text and it's not right. It doesn't look anything like that. So what I'll do now is actually format that text. So uh, first of all, it's the wrong color. Secondly, it's the wrong font. It's a normal style of font. It is Times New Roman. So it's nothing extravagant. It's not bold. It is italic though. Uh, size wise, it was bigger than that. Uh, let's do that. I don't think it was quite that big though. Right, I think it was around the 13 mark. No, it was 12. OK, let's make it 12. Not 21, 12. Right. The reason that it's filling the frame better on the left than that one is the gap between it. At the moment, it's 15. And I had it a bit bigger than that, which is probably 20. So it looks like that. Still not the right colour, though. So uh, it's gone to green and I want it to be blue. In my swatches, I can choose colours, but I also have recent and my blue is in there as a recent. Now, what's left to format is the frame. There's nothing wrong with the text. It's the frame that's not right. So I need my text frame tool. Now, the reason it's looking very crowded on here is because I have to broadcast this at a smaller ratio so that my screen set to 1600 by 900. So I'm going to need to go into the view and go into studio and make sure I do have text frame enabled. It's, it's somewhere. Where's it put it? Uh, what are you? Oh, helpfully, it's on the other screen. There we go. There's my text frame. So on a much bigger screen, it, it's much easier to work with. But what I've got on here is there's, I can, I can add columns if I want. So it's that simple to add columns to my document. I can change the gutter of that and the width of that and everything there. I only need the one. Um, I want on the text frame itself to have a stroke on it. And if I go to the stroke options and make it solid, I think it was a possibly one pixel, just, just maybe 1.5 points, something like that. I'd guess it was 1.5. And that puts the border on the outside. Can't see it too well there, but if I zoom in, you can see it's on the edge. You can even in here, uh, let's go into there, get really tricky. If you look at that, it's rounded at the corner, but you could have it uh, mitered if you wanted. Have I actually got that selected? There we go. You could change it to that. You could change it to square. So if I didn't want it, that, that, might, um, that might look a bit fuzzy. So I'll have it square. You can get down to that level. One thing I always do is make sure that I have scale with object on, because if I make the object bigger, I want that to be in proportion, not disappear because it's so tiny. But that doesn't solve the problem with the placement of the text. Does it? 
you have insets here and you can inset that text just like that. There is that chain icon. We've seen that before. That will chain it together. So as I bring that up there, that's probably just about right. If I put that at four, that's about right. Which is, at that point, something interesting happened, but I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, I think I'm probably made the gap a little bit big on the text. This 20 points up here, it could well have been 18. That looks better. All right. So I formatted a text frame there. So there was formatting on the actual text itself and the other formatting was on the frame. Right. So have you still put your questions in? You've all gone very quiet. If you're with me live, you've all gone very quiet. OK. I am going to leave that alone where it is and I'm going to get uh, a new file. I'll make it the same, but with a single page. Right. So it's A5. It's got my margins on it, but it's a single page. The reason that I'm going to do this is to show you some magic with the text. Right. It's very plain, this file. I've not done anything with it at all yet, but I want to import some text. I want to put some text in it. So I have my text frame tool here. And we know that if I put that on it and I start typing in there, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. There we go. You've got some text. And if I made that bigger, it would fill it better. I'd reach a point where I had problems with overflow, maybe. But I just wanted to show you before we do that, that you have two different options to scale that. If we look down there. There's two scaling handles, an interior one and an exterior one. So let's make sure we can see the whole thing. We grab the inside one. I'm trying to grab the inside one. There you go. You can see what happens with that one. But the outside one actually makes the entire box bigger or smaller, including the text. So the text is changing in size, whereas with that internal one, the text stays the same size. So be aware of that. Right. Ah, people are quiet because they're thinking of spending money. <laughs> That's understandable then. That's completely understandable. Right. So what I'm going to do with this, let's just delete that frame and start again. Because I'm going to do some magic with text. Right. I've got some text. I don't want to sit here in Affinity Publisher and type it in. Absolutely not. We want to bring text in. So I'm going to put on here. Um, let's go on to the master. All right. And let's make sure on the master there we've got a text frame on that side and we've got a text frame on that side. And in here, I'm going to make sure that I click on that little icon, which will link the two frames together. That's my master. So go in here. There's my text frame. Right. Once I've done that, magic should happen, hopefully, hopefully. I've got text elsewhere. I'll show you where the text is. The text is the text of an entire book, A Christmas Carol. And I have two versions of the text. I have a word version in a docx format and I have A Christmas Carol in text, plain text. Look at it, all of it, the entire book in plain text format. I'm going to start with the text one, the plain text one. If I, with this, make sure I've got my text frame selected. I want to put it in there. Go to File and Place. And it will open up. It's looking at the Assets folder. I'm going across and I'm going to click on the text file and open. And it does. It puts that in there. A couple of things to be aware of. There are two icons in bright red down here. Let's zoom in a little bit. There they are. They don't go any bigger, unfortunately. One is the eyeball. The eyeball is showing me the overflow. If I click the eyeball, the overflow disappears. It's not deleted the text. It's just deleted the overflow. This little bit here, the little triangle, if I click that, it will load the overflow text into my cursor and I can draw out another box. And there's some text. Can't see it too well, but it's there. If I move that little box back over the white edge, you can see there's text in it. Now, just imagine how long that's going to take. Because if I have to draw out every page, 
and it's a full book. And I'm opening up the Word file now just to give you an idea of how many pages that actually is. Here's the Word file with styles in it. Uh, 46 pages of incredibly tightly formatted text. Um, it is 28,618 words. There's a lot of it. And it's in that frame there. All right, that's not good. That's not good. That's not the way to do it. Let's do some magic. I only have in this file one page there. I can show you that I can add another page. In fact, I can add two. Let's let's add three, actually, and we'll put them after page one. And there they are. And I can go back to page one and I can click on the triangle. I can move over to page two and I can click. And because this frame's linked to this frame, it fills it in. But look at page four. Oh, no. So I have to go back to page three and I have to click on it and then click on the triangle and then go to page four. Are you bored yet? Because I would be. Right, not doing that. So I'm going to undo and get us back to having one page. And the reason that I'm doing that, where you go, right, one page, is to show you that you don't have to do it for two or three or, or anything like that. You can do this from just one page. My overflow is still there. There it is. It's all that bit down there. Toggle it on and off. I'm hovering over that, but this time I'm holding the shift key down. And I click on the overflow. Doesn't look like it did a thing, but look what happened over on the left hand side. It made all the pages I need for that entire book. Let's have a look how many pages that is. Bearing in mind, this is A5, not A4. 81 pages. And it made them all. So that shift key and clicking on that triangle is your friend. Right, let's undo that. And in fact, let's go in there and delete all of the text. So we've now got no text back in it. I'm going to repeat the process, but this time, file place, I'm going to choose a Word file. Now, you've seen the Word file. The Word file had formatting in it, including headings. So I'm going to open that one and in it comes. Now you can see our blue text. And it's a heading. Which is grand, but it still isn't filling in all of the extra pages. OK. But if I again just hold that shift key and click once on the triangle, it will go away and strut its magic little stuff with all of the other pages. And somewhere in here, there is stave two. Where's stave two? Oh, it's very difficult to find it because of the formatting and it's so close together. Oh, what to do? Well, how about we do command and F? And we type in stave and go find it. There it is. There's stave five. But it actually shows me all instances of stave so I can navigate that document. I can even navigate here where there is a table of contents. There it is. So find is your friend as well. So we can do magic with this. How fast could we make a book and get, <laughs> get a PDF of it? Right. Well. There's so much that I could show you. I could talk for three weeks. Luckily, I won't. YouTube would probably cut me off. But we will format this. OK, right. I'm not overly concerned about the styles that have come in from Word, but I will show you that there are text styles and there is a base text style. So this bit here says no, no style attached to it. And there, but there is a base style. What I tend to do is not concern myself with styles from Word unless it really needs to look like that. And to be honest, you wouldn't be bringing it into Publisher if it was perfect in Word, would you? So what I tend to do is select the whole lot. And if we go back to the pages and we click here, that should select the entire thing, all of it. Um, Apply the base style to it. And in fact, if I go in and edit the base style, I would want this Times New Roman. 
So at the moment it's Ariel, but I could choose Times New Roman and I could choose to make it italic if I wanted. No, actually I don't. So I'll say no change and OK. And that's not done a darn thing, has it? Uh, what could be happening here is because it was a word file in the first place, etc, etc. So just because I want to take this demo to the end, I'm going to get a completely new file and I'm going to do my master so you can watch me do it again. I am putting a frame on there and a frame on there and I am going back to the first frame, grabbing that, no shift key, hovering over the second one and that links the two. And that's the master that I've got that is applied on here. File, place, choose the text one. Text is your friend. Oh, you keep double clicking back on the other one. There we go. Right, that's got nothing in it at all. So technically speaking in here, I should, it's not applying this, it's not. So I'm going to make it a body style, that'll do nicely. And I will go into there and I will edit the body style to be Times New Roman and make it brown. You're wondering why brown. Uh, there's a rationale for brown, not really orangey. We want a sort of brownish virtually black, but, but brown. Right, I have applied that style. So that has gone on all of the text. We can't see it yet because I've not done the old shift click to get all of the rest of the pages, but to have now. Okay, I've got a couple of questions here. When I have different masters, can I resort them? Created the first master A, then B, then C, want to have them A, C, B. Uh, you should be able to. Let me go and make another master. Simple as that, there's master B. I, can I drag that up there? Oh, I need a little bit more room, don't I? Right, can I drag that down there? Ooh, it's not letting me reorder them that way, but what you could do is rename them. So if I wanted that to be C, I could do that. That would work. Uh, there's also more magic with masters. We'll have a look at that. And the other question was, um, <laughs> no, keep talking, you love it. <laughs> oh, it could be three in the morning. Careful, careful what you wish for. I would love grep styles, do they exist? Right, grep itself does exist in Affinity. Um, I need to spend more time looking at that. I will not be looking at that tonight. But if you would like a session on that, then I will do that. So let me know if that you, will, you would like that. Um, the grep is quite powerful, but it's quite complicated as well. Um, InDesign has grep. So you'd need to do two things with that. You need to understand how the grep works and then you'd need to actually define what it is precisely you're attempting to do and then marry the two together. But there is grep inside there. It's actually quite bizarre because footnotes and endnotes aren't. Really? You've managed to put grep in it? No footnotes and endnotes? But hey, it's here now. So let's be happy it's here. Right. So what I need to do with this at this stage is there's a couple of things that I can show you with styles. Like you've seen me apply a style. The benefit of a style is I've got all of these pages that are now formatted perfectly. And if I decide I don't particularly want the body to be brown, I can go to edit and I can change the colour and decoration. So I could make it blue if I wanted. Midnight blue. Or hideous pink. Oh, yes, lurid hideous pink. And that's the benefit of a style. Now, actually, that's not what I want. I'm happy with the brown. Leave it alone, woman. Right. But styles themselves in here can be incredibly powerful for more reasons than you might imagine. Now, we've got some proper content in here. A stave is a chapter as far as Charles Dickens was concerned. There's also content. So there is a table of contents there. Um, it's not brilliant, to be honest, because uh, it's all wrapped round. But if I bring it in like that, it starts to look that I can actually at least see what staves are in here. So this was just something where I just need to press enter to sort that out. So I've got a title at the top. I've got a preface. I've got a, at the beginning of a chapter. I've got lots of things in there. Now, I could go through and manually push that to a new page and make that bigger because really that should be a heading and that should probably be a heading. But don't, don't do it manually. Use styles. All right. In here, you already have some styles. There is a heading one. So would my contents be a heading one? To be honest, they probably would. And probably that stave would be a heading one. 
Well, before we go any further, that style's absolutely hideous, isn't it? Um, what that needs to be is the same brown that I had for the other one. So if we go back into there, it's that brown there. So I have that brown, which I'm not going to play around with colours tonight. I haven't got the time. Um, I've got a couple of videos on YouTube all about colours in photo and publisher. I can do it all uh, in designer rather. I can do it all again in publisher if you like. Another hour and a half. <laughs> colours are amazing. They are nothing short of amazing the way you can work with colours. But tonight I'm keeping it incredibly simple. So my contents are now brown. I am also going to make them Times New Roman. And you're probably thinking, what are you doing? You just said use styles and now you're doing it all manually. Oh, should we have it italic while we're at it? No, that, that doesn't work, does it? I know I did. But having got that sorted out, I'm now going to, on my heading one, click on that and just click update heading one. And the second instance of that updated, that's why we use styles. That's why we do that. Thank you very much for that. I'm late. You're an amazing woman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. So I've got my styles in there. I, I probably would put that on the preface. Why not? Let's, let's do that as well. And I'd probably have special formatting for the top. But I need the rest of this formatted. I could do with it being formatted really quickly, couldn't I? Because time's marching on. It's four minutes past, past nine here. Should we try and break YouTube and do a two hour spectacular? <laughs> That would frighten people, wouldn't it? Well, what I'm going to do is to make it easy, because if you notice this table of contents, massive air quotes, some table of contents, no page numbers. No, because it came in from a text file. I didn't know where the page numbers would be. And I need to find stave two and look at it. I'm never going to be able to find it. It's somewhere in there. So command and F, let's type stave in again. That worked really well last time. And I can now go down to the staves. There's the first one. That's fine. There's the second one. So let me apply uh, heading one to that. Awesome. And that one, not a heading two, a heading one. So very, very rough and ready. Now, you should be noticing at this point, this looks terrible terrible. Who wants a chapter to start there? I know. What can I say? Uh, what else did I need before we started doing magic with it? I noticed something um, about each. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll do this bit first and then I'll show you the bit, the next clever bit. So many clever bits. Right. I'm going into my heading one and I am going to edit it. You can see on the left hand side all the categories that you've got that you can edit. It's virtually unlimited. Look at it all. Look at it. What I'm interested in is my paragraph spacing I'm interested in, but I'm also interested in the flow of the thing as well. So in flow, paragraph flow. So I'm moving this so we can see this text here. There is a start option. Right, in here, it can start anywhere. It can start in the next column. Look what, what's happening as I'm doing it in the next frame. It's actually disappeared. Where did it go? Uh, probably over there. Let's do that again. Next column. Uh, it's disappeared somewhere. Next frame, next page. Ah, next odd page, next even page. Most books, all the chapters start on the right-hand page. The retro page. Is it retro? No. Verso. Or is that the other way? Uh, whatever it is, I think it's retro. Right. Next odd page is where I want it to be. Now, that's moved it here to such a degree we can't see it anymore. That's because it did it with all of them. OK, so let's just say OK on that and go back to the pages and go and find out what on earth happened. Right. There's the beginning. That's going to be my cover. There's my preface. Awesome. There's my table of contents. And there is the beginning of the book. And all of that was done by changing the style. Don't ever go in and start manually moving anything. Don't. Not worth it. Not worth it. Because now I've looked at it, I've thought, mm, not happy with that. I like it on the right hand page. But problem I've got with it, it's starting at the top and I'd like it starting lower down. Do you know what you do in Word when you do all of this business and you start entering and all of that? Don't do that because you can see it's breaking it already. Don't do that. 
Uh, let's make sure this is all. Yep, that's that's fine. Don't do that. It won't work properly. As soon as I put a carriage return on that, it moves to the next page. And this is what frustrates people. They know what they want. They want to move that heading down the page and they want to put in a few carriage returns and it works in Word. So why doesn't it work in here? Because it's far more your friend than Word. Let's go back into the style and let's go to the edit heading one. And in there, we've looked at, uh, we looked at flow, didn't we? In there, we moved it to the next odd page, but we also have spacing. And let's move it out of the way so we can see it. We could change the spacing. We could put some spacing before. Let's put lots and lots of spacing before. Hmm, why aren't you moving? Why aren't you moving? You should be moving. Oh, we can put some spacing after as well. You see, it's moving before. It's moving after. Why aren't you moving before? This worked in rehearsals. Uh, no, still not doing it. Okay, well, uh, hmm. We'll work out why that's not working. Ah, I know what's wrong with it. I can't remember how much I put. We'll put 50 and we'll put uh, 50 after as well. Right. The reason that that is not working is because it says use space before and I've said no change. And you need to say at the top of a column, which will move it down. Now we can play. Um, if you think about chapters, they often start lower down than that. So let's try what 80 would look like. That's starting to look good. And in here, we've got 31. Shall we try 60? Not bad. And we could even bring it down a little bit more. So let's take it to 100. Now it's starting to look good. Thing is, it did that with all of them. Look, contents moved down and way, way, way down here. Look at this. There's the end of that chapter on the next page. Completely blank page. I didn't put that in. Definitely. And there's the, it's on the right hand side. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. That's the power of styles. Styles. Absolutely. If, some people think of styles as, a, as an advanced feature and they teach you everything else first. And you go in and you manually format everything and then you discover styles and you're feeling murderous at that stage. No, start with styles. So anything that you, you can do manually formatting, you can format in a style and then apply the style. And then everything just automatically updates and it's magic, including, let's go back to the top, this thing. Yes, that's the table of contents, but I can't see the page numbers. That's pretty simple. Let's just go into it. Let's get ourselves a new line. We are underneath there. And let's do some magic. Right, we will go into text. We will go into table of contents, insert table of contents. Now, at this point, you might think, oh, how can we insert a table of contents? We've, we've not told it where the contents are or anything. How would it know? Oh, it just knows. <laughs> Trust me, insert table of contents. There you go. It just knows. It knows it's page seven and 27 and 45 and 67 and 77. How does it know that? You'll notice here as well, uh, there's an error there. That was my fault. Well, actually, it wasn't my fault. It was where the data came from. There's a space at the beginning of each of those that's not good, is it? So if we go back to our find and we navigate to them, let's just take away the space. There is a space there. That's not it. Uh, no, it's not that one either. Why are you doing that? You should not be doing that. Oh. Uh. No. Oh, well, be awkward then. <laughs> be awkward. Right. There was a space at the beginning before I formatted it, and it seems to have attached that somewhere. It's there, isn't it? But when I take it away, it's moving back in and I'm losing my indent. So I'm not going to fiddle. I'm not going to fiddle. Uh, but that's why we're seeing those spaces. That's what they are. So if I go back to my pages and we whip to the top, that's why they're slightly indented on the others. Although, let's, shall we try and delete it from there? Oh, he doesn't mind that. Oh, jolly good. Very nice. OK, so then at least that's that looks perfect, doesn't it? Now, at this point, it it's great. It's got it's got the numbers so I can actually go and delete this. What's another benefit of that? 
Oh, I'm glad you like I'm not phased when things go wrong. Oh, I, I've trained Flash. Believe you me, things have gone wrong. It crashed every two minutes. <laughs> we had a ball, an absolute ball. We didn't learn much about Flash, but we had a, we had fun. Yeah, the problem with this one is even if it had page numbers in the one I'm about to delete, they would have to have been typed in. So if I whipped up here now and I just put, oh, well, now I know it's page seven. And that one there, that is page 27. Yes, it wouldn't be if I changed the size of the font. No. So I'm going to delete that. And you're quite right there, Hans. I'm going to change the style because that looks grotty, doesn't it? But the benefit of using a table of contents is that it's dynamic. It will automatically update itself. And you will find over here now that you have extra styles. So if I click in there, you can see you've got a TOC, table of contents one, heading one. And I can go into that and I can edit it and I can make sure in the font that it is Times New Roman because that's the one we like and I can change the colour of it so in my text fill I can make it that nice brown colour that we're using and okay and it now looks very similar to the one I had only it's automatic. To prove that point Let's look at those numbers. If I go back into my body style, which is, should be somewhere in here. Where's my body style? There it is. If I go in and edit the body style and I change that from 12, let's go crazy. 24. Oh, dear, dear, dear. But if we can ever find this and do an update of it, uh, you can see it's updated in here. Right, we do an update on that. That should have updated. Why are you not updating? Well, you've got all these options in your table of content here. So maybe we will find an update in here. This is how your table of contents actually works. And you can see in here, we've got a row of buttons where you can insert and one is update. So let's click update. And we've gone from pages 7, 65, 77, 77, 77, aren't right. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I know what's wrong with that. You tell me what's wrong with that while I tell you the rest of this. Uh, you can in here as well update all of them. So not just the one that you're in, you can remove them and you can rename them. You can also say what scope you want. So maybe you want a table of contents just for each section rather than the entire document. And this is where the magic happens. You can decide what to include in your table of contents based on a style and the ones that have got the tick in heading one and heading two. And that's why the staves are coming in. Right. Anybody worked out what the problem is? Why everything's saying page 77? Nobody said in the chat. Is it broken? No, nope, it's not broken. Let's actually go and have a look, see what the problem is. Let's go to page 77. That's the problem, the overflow. Because we've made the text bigger, it needs more pages and it won't automatically put them in. It will do if I hold the shift key down and click on there, then it will. But we don't want to do that because that's a little bit big, isn't it? But it would do. So the problem is it gets to page 77 and it cuts off. And that's what the issue is. But we will go back to up here, uh, there. We will make sure that we edit our body style back to 12. So in our font where it was 24, we'll take it back to 12. We will go to the table of contents, click in there, make sure we've got the table of contents open in here and do a refresh. And everything's back to where it should be. 27, 45, 67 and 77. So all of the table of contents features are working because you've used styles. Right. So we've done our styles. Yep. That's not a problem. Let's have a look. What else? One thing that's new since the first beta is I'm assuming you all know what a master page is. A master page is the page that the other pages are based on and how you tend to use them. You saw me put a frame on. You tend to put content on there. So if I put down here, I just click there and I get some text. I might want to put page number. So I would like the page number at the bottom of every page. 
That's what I would like. I like that. Because this master is applied, anything that I put on the master comes through to all the other pages. Doesn't look grand, not formatted yet, nor is it automatically updating, but it will be. All right. So that's what a master is. So back up here. Let's say you want a page number. You don't want the text page number, right? <laughs> and the spaces before my stave, but they are. I should have deleted them at the beginning, shouldn't I? That's what I should have done. Ah, oh, heck, never mind. Right. Instead of putting text in here, you put a field in. It's like a variable. And what you're saying is, show me the page number, but the actual page number, not a static page number. Update it. So if I go up to text and I go down to insert fields, page number, that's exactly what it will do. It's very tiny. So let's just move in. There it is. But that's it. Now, in there, that's got no style at the moment. If I style that to the body, at least it will match. I would, of course, make a proper page number style and make it smaller, but I'm going to cheat just purely for speed. And now we're an 18 in. Who's flagging yet? I'm not flagging. Anybody else flagging? Right. Let's take that across. Get that in the middle. Right. We have a page number. Let's go and have a look now. Ah, now it says page five. Now it says page nine. You'll notice page eight, not there. That's because your master has two halves. There's your right hand one and your left hand one. So what you would need to do, and we need to be a little bit closer to be able to do that, is take a copy of that. So I'm holding the option key down and dragging and that gets it onto the other page. And from there, snap it to the middle and try and get it aligned with that one on the right. There we go. And straight away, pages, page eight is there and page nine is there. Right. How are you liking Publisher so far? Well, I'm loving it. How's everybody else feeling about Publisher so far? There's things that, that aren't there, but there's an awful lot of things that absolutely are there. We haven't even looked at images yet. Good grief. If I'm going to finish in the next six minutes, which will... We'll, match the last one, we're going to have to motor. I'm happy to go on a little bit longer. You let me know in the chat. There'll be people watching the video thinking, please stop. <laughs> but if you want me to carry on and you're here live, then I will. So let me know. Let me know. Right. So we've got lots of text in there. We've got styles in there. We've used frames in there. I haven't even saved this yet. I will put a Christmas carol. We don't want it to crash at this moment, do we? OK, right. One thing that you can do with masters is you can now nest your masters. I'll let you think about that for a fraction of a second. Nest your masters. Right, what exactly does that mean? Well, I've folded this up and we've actually got a master A with our page numbers on. Oh, keep going. You want me to keep going? Okay, All right, I'm going to, I'm going to tell them this in the video. that <laughs> You said keep going, so I'll keep going. All right, and we've got a master B. Now, there's nothing on master B at the moment, but there will be in a moment. All right, we've got master A applied, which had our page numbers on it. OK, right. But for this book, we might want something a little bit more extravagant in the background department. So I'm finding. I think it was number three. I've got here some um, pages old pages. I don't want something that distracting, but I'd like this behind my text, hence going for brown text because it'd look quite nice. So I'm looking at that one and that's not bad at all. I'm liking that one. Right. So what I'd like to do with that is bring that on to B. Right. So on my master B, I've got this huge graphic. Now, if you're wondering how I'm zooming in and out, I'm holding the option key down and I'm using a magic mouse. So I'm just flicking my finger up and down. Right. I'm going to move that so it's just fitting that page, which is there. So it's on the left, on the right. Now, what I could do at this point is I could do that, but it totally changes the paper. All right. That looks great. I think I'd have it up there a little bit, but I've got it hanging off. And if I try and scale it, no, it's all going wrong. Vector cropping, the crop tool, the vector crop tool. All right. If I do that, 
it will actually crop that out and it'll be perfect without me having stuff hanging over the end and everything else. So that looks perfect. Now, the issue I've got at that point is if I then, let's say for this, these two pages, instead of master A, I would like master B applied. Let's do that. Uh, that's not grand, is it? For a start, it's covering up the text and oh, all kinds of problems. So what on earth's going on with this? Yeah, not good. Right, what you need to do with this, uh, what I would tend to do with this, I know on Master A, I've got, I'm actually doing this a very strange way, but that's because I've been doing it as a demo. Right. We know that Master A has got the page numbers on and it's got our text frames on it as well. So we really want that one applying, don't we? I'm going to take those two things completely and move them onto Master B. So there they are in front of the graphic, which incidentally needs some opacity on it because it's shockingly uh, wrong one, wrong one. Let's get my layers and take my opacity down. We want to see it, but we don't want it too much in our face. Right, I'm going to now take that and I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put it on master A. Don't crash on me. I can see what you're doing. Don't you dare crash on me. Now, at this point, I'd still have a problem that you wouldn't see it. If you put it behind the text, then you'd be able to see the text. So make sure you keep your eye on the layers here. Right. I got a couple of comments here. So uh, after Adobe subscription got too expensive, $75 a month. Wow. I think you could have found it, David. I certainly hope so. Uh, one of the examples, you use a picture frame, you can zoom the image inside. You can, you can, I'll show you that. Right. So I've got my master A. Let's go back and have a look what that's done to my documents. Perfect. Ah, oh, it's looking grand. Let's do that control and W and get rid of the frames. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. But no page numbers, no page numbers. Page numbers have vanished. The page numbers are on must be. But you can. Well, I really have no idea what this is going to do. I can do. I've done this. You know, when you're playing around and you've tried it and it works and then you come to do it for real and you've got real data and you're thinking it's going to blow its mind. Right. What you can do is I should be able to apply uh, master B to some of my pages. So let's say I grab some of these pages and I apply master B to them. It's got master B applied, it says. And you can see what happens. The problem is the text has disappeared, but my page numbers are there. Yeah, it's not perfect. But if I applied master A to master B, now, apart from the fact that my text has disappeared and I have absolutely no idea why, that could be the text frames. But you can see what happens. I've got the page numbers are coming from master B and the background is coming from master A. And if I'd done that the, the right way, in other words, if I created that at the beginning and applied it that way, then I wouldn't be having a problem with the text moving around. It's your friend. Ma nested masters are your friend. It means you can have a design for a page with the background on it and you can have another design that has page numbers on it and you can nest them. I don't know if you're aware, but you can also in here, when you're looking at this, you can actually disapply. So I'm in my page at this point. I'm actually in the preface page. I can actually see everything in here and I can just turn that off by taking a tick out. In fact, that's not having it, is it? Uh, it should be having it. It's not having it. I, I've had that working. Yes, I shall have to have a look at that as well. Right. OK, somebody mentioned images, images, images. Um, I always drag and drop the masters. To be honest, you don't have to. Um, you can go in here and clear the master. You can apply masters. You can even have extra masters. So this is this is possibly not the best file to demonstrate this with, but I'll just show you the feature. I do it by dragging and dropping. So you saw me drag that and drop it on a page. That's one way to do it. But you can right click and go to apply masters and you get this little dialog box. Uh, you can apply master A to the current spread, specific pages, da, 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 all pages. And notice what you have down here, replace existing. 
but you don't need to. So let me give me one second. Let me see if I can fix all of this. Let's see if I could apply. Well, which one have we done now? Uh, where on earth are we up to? I think I'd need to disapply. I should never have gone down this rabbit hole. Um, I think I should um, apply master. No, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Uh, I need I need a more simple file to demonstrate this with. But what I'm what I'll do is I'll just show it you on here, which is in your masters, you can apply, choose a master. So we've got A and we've got B. What's complicating matters for us is that A is applied to B. So I've actually truly nested it already. Do you know what? Let's do it properly. Let's go get a new file or you're all just going to be confused and don't want you confused. Right. We've got something really simple now. We've got one page. We can't go wrong with one page, can we? Oh, I don't know. It's possible. Master A, Master B. Let's put a lovely, pretty shape on B. And so we know which one it is, just to prove a point. So I'm not doing this now from a perspective of let's make a pretty book. No, I'm doing this so you understand what's happening. We have the letter B. It's not going to update or anything like that. It's just to say this is master B. There it is. And this, this is master A. Right. So go in there. This is master A. Right. Obviously, if I don't move one of these, this isn't going to work. So I'm going to move B down to the bottom. And at the moment, Master A is applied. I could drag and drop Master B. And now B is applied instead of A. It's one or the other. It is indeed very powerful. Um, it's just a matter of don't do what I did, which was start doing one thing and then change your mind. Think it through at the beginning and then it's much easier for you. But if I said here, apply Master. And I said, mm, Master A, notice the option at the bottom, replace existing. Well, I don't want you to. Let's see what happens. Oh, and it has. It's replaced the existing. That's not grand. It's not. Uh, apply Master. No, nope, it should not replace the existing. But if I want A and B, then let's do it the way I did it, which was we have A applied to this. Let's apply B to A. Let's nest it. And now master A includes what's on B. Now that is very advanced. It is very powerful. It's very advanced and it would enable you to, to do very clever things with page numbers and keep down in your file the number of masters you've got. Because if I want to change what B says, so let me say I want that B to be bright red. OK, it changes it on both of the masters and that's why it's so important. Right. So masters nested. Yes, we've done that. We've done fields, images. You want to do images. Oh, we're at the 130 mark. Are we still going? Are we still going? Images. Let me go back to that President Sunday one. These were the images you were talking about, wasn't it? This is our year so far. This was our Italian night. How this works is that photo, when I click on it, it's an image frame. It's one of these over here. Picture frame rectangle tool. That was how that started life. And what it enables you to do is there's a little slider underneath. And that was how that photograph came in. But that photograph looked much better as I brought it up. So not too much. Just so you can see the two guys, you can also use this to move that within the frame. The image placement is amazing. So let me show you that on a blank one, by the way. Uh, did I have that re re replace there? Oh, I didn't think I did. Oh, let me try that again. Right. Uh, I, I then need to undo lots of things, don't I? Let's get back to A and B. Right. I let's go in there. Let's go to apply master. Did somebody spot something I didn't? Oh, maybe I did. Right. Uh, A is applied. Apply master B. Don't replace existing. Boom. You're quite right. Excellent spot there. 
You win the prize. I don't know what the prize is, but you win the prize. Excellent. That's exactly what should happen. But there's actually, that just proves the point. There's two ways to do it. You can apply multiple masters to an individual play page, or you can nest the masters in the master pages section. Two ways to do it. The image handling originally wasn't great. The first beta, the image handling was not great, but the image handling now is fabulous. So if I just show you how I did this one, this is Mike. Mike's crazy. Not my Mike. This is another Mike. Um, but I've got that image. So how I would start adding that image is I would add a placeholder here. So I would draw myself in a placeholder like that. And at that point, uh, I can drag and drop an image in. So over on my other screen, but I will show you, I have a load of demos and one is the President's Sunday one. Photos, and I have no idea which one that was. I can tell you which ones it wasn't. Let's get the thumbnails and I'll find the right one. Uh, where's Mike? Oh no, it's one of these. It was the Italian night. Oh, come on. Wasn't that one? It'll be the last one I check. I swear it will. Uh, da, da, da. No, no. Oh, come on. There, no, that's the dog. Oh, maybe it's not even in there. I'll tell you what, we'll use the dog. We will use the dog. We will drag and drop the dog in there. Right, so that is actually the kind of image that you might want to work with. So first of all, I pro Mike's head's in the right place. The dog might not be, but Mike's head is. Uh, but I can zoom that up. Hang on, that's not what I'm trying to do. Let's zoom in a little bit. I can zoom up the image, zoom down the image. Obviously, you want it to fill the frame, which is about right. I can move it within there. I could even rotate it fractionally. So if it meant getting more of the dog in, I could do that. You also, if you notice here, have the two handles. The inner one is letting you scale the frame and not the image. The outer one scales the whole thing. So if I wanted to be able to bring this one back in, don't know if you know about your shortcuts as well, but I need to play with the stacking order a lot. Command shift and square bracket brings it to the front. Command shift and other square bracket, left square bracket sends it to the back like that. Forward, back. Leave the shift key off and it will bring it up one level at a time, eventually getting it to the top. So the images are absolutely amazing. The image placement is stunning. Uh, and as you can see from that, I had that about there. And I placed all of those images in that way and all of them were uh, placed like this one. If I go into that, um, I did scale that one. So let's just click once on it. Uh, that's the original image scaled up and I just had to make sure I had everybody in it. But I was able then to squish that down a bit uh, or make it a little bit smaller at the bottom like that and not affect the actual photo. So the images are absolutely brilliant. Right. So images. Uh, now, there was. Um, let's have a look at that. Oh, images. If you need images, if you haven't got images, you might not have images. Uh, let's get a blank file. There's a blank file. Uh, if you go to view and you go to uh, studio and you go to stock, you might not have seen this one. Let's tear it out so we can see it. Uh, I deliberately with this, you see it says powered by Unsplash. I deliberately didn't tick this so I could show it you. So I'm now ticking I understand. Uh, and let me do a search. So uh, let's try, oh, let's try Samoid. Let's see if there's a Samoid dog. Oh, are they gorgeous? My boy was a Samoid. Right, so uh, just drag and drop and I've got an image. So it's integrated, it's searching on Splash. You have got other options. So Pixabay is one, that's another one I use. Didn't even need to re-enter the search. Oh, that one's the spit image of my boy. Right, so again, I've got to, uh, OK, that uh, and drag the image on. Oh, that could be my lad. There we go. If you think about it, even if you subscribe to Adobe, you have to pay extra for the stock. So you've got Unsplash, you've got Pixabay and you've got Pexels. So again, I might need to I might need to do that. 
uh, yep, I understand, and drag and drop the images. So be very careful about the image rights, etc. But you've got access to that in there as well. So the image handling is nothing short of amazing. Now, I did promise before we went, although we're still going, aren't we? There's people crying, waiting for me to stop. Um, links, you need to know about links. Do you need an account to those sites to use them? I do have an account for some of them, but in here it doesn't seem you do. I would imagine it's using the API and the call that's going through to it is just indicating it's going from Affinity Publisher and it's doing it that way. I do have an account for one of them, um, Pixabay, but not the other two. And it's letting me use images. So, no, I don't think you do for that. Uh, right, oh, let's get rid of that. Oh, let's sadly delete all the dogs. Oh, bless. oh, in fact, you know what? I'll leave them there because I'm going to move on to a different one now to show you uh, links. Let's show you a link. Let's imagine in here, suspend your disbelief, right, that I want to put a link to Mike's email and my email. And when we send this file out by, via PDF, people can click send us an email. There's also in there, if you notice, mention of a website there. So I will copy that like that. You can in here now, couldn't, this was added. You can go down to here and go interactive and say insert a hyperlink. You need to specify the type of link. So it's a page link, an anchor link, a URL, a file or an email. Obviously, in this case, it's a URL. You put the URL in and you can specify a style. So you don't have to have a style. We'll leave it at the hyperlink style and click OK. And that changes the color and makes it underlined. So you now have a clickable link, which will be clickable if I take that out to be a PDF. So links are your friend are your friend. Let's go to that one there. Do the same again. Text. Insert. No, interactive. Insert. Hyperlink. What kind? Email link. What's the email address? It's my email. And OK. And now when that is put out, they'll be able to send it to me. So that was links. But I did promise, didn't I? Do I need to show you how to export? Do you know how to export? What I will do in terms of export is command, option, shift and S or file export. And it will take you into this dialog box. It's nowhere near the export persona of designer, which needs to be completely different. But I will choose in there 400. I will choose pages. I'm not sure if this is my final one or the one I've been demoing. Um, and I'm good to go. So it's calculating the size. It's going to be pretty hefty, I'd imagine, with all the images that I've got in a minute. And then export it. And I will put that on the desktop. So it has a good think about it. It's working out compression. It's working out everything else. You'll notice there were no errors. I have seen errors. It will report to you whether you have um, overflowing text and things like that. But there was no errors on that one. And it's done. It's on my desktop. And there it is. So let me open that up. This looks like the one I edited. It's got green on it and all kinds of other things. But if we go to this one, there is the link to the website. So click that and it's opened up on my other page. In fact, where is it gone? There we go. And that one will probably, I oh, don't click that. It'll open up my email and we'll be there all day trying to close it. Ah. <laughs> uh, Right. Hello, Andreas. You're late. You, you're very late. An hour 41 we've been going, but we're not finished yet. No, because we've done that now. This is just pure alchemy and magic, this next bit. I will finish on this one before, well, I would say before it's dark, but it was dark hours ago. Right. Let's go to publisher and let's use this file as an example. Can we do this one? I think we probably could. Let's tidy it up a bit. Let's get rid of some of this stuff we've been playing around with. Let's get rid of it. Let's make that back to blue before I get shot for using the wrong colour. Do we have a file? We do. We do. We've got a great file there. That's the final file. So I'm going to save that file. Now, I'm also, because I have no idea where I saved that. 
I really have no idea. Let me see if it's in my demo folder up there. Do, 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 do. No, clearly it's not that one. Oh, is it that one? Hmm. It is. I think I've saved it over the wrong one, but never mind. Right. That's my file, my Affinity Publisher file. And it is timed and dated right now. That's the file. That file is local on my hard drive here. It does not need to be there. Not for this next bit of magic, it doesn't. So I'm going up to my Google Drive. It doesn't need to be there either. It needs to be, um, best place for it at this stage is iCloud Drive. Within iCloud Drive, probably Affinity Designer. Now, I have no idea if I've got that in there already. We'll find out. Uh, it was called Precedence, wasn't it? So if I type presentation, no, we're all right. We're all right. So I am going to take that and I am going to pop it into the Affinity Designer folder. Right, if I type in Pres now, there it is. And it's uploading it. It's quite hefty. It's 120 odd meg. So it'll take its sweet time to upload. But while it's strutting its stuff, I can show you some things. I can show you magic while it does its stuff. Let's move some of this stuff and get a light on. I wonder if anybody watching on the video is still alive. But I know you're still here alive, so that's absolutely fine. Right, I've got this here. Let me do my multicam magic. Let me get my webcam on. There we are. There's the output. The output's on the wrong screen. Got to love tech. Let's get the output on the right screen. Uh, you can see my lovely poppy plate. Oh, that's my router. That's my wireless thing. Uh, right. We make that a little bit bigger. Go on. Perfect. Right. Right, I am moving this. I am bringing it over here. And there it is. There is the final printed copy. Came back today. So let me, uh, can you see it there with the light? That's not bad, is it? Right, let's move that over. That's what it all looked like. Printed out. There it is. Uh, that was printed to a PDF. And then printed to a printer from there. So you can see that is pretty accurate. Look, it lines up perfectly. I was amazed. I was absolutely amazed. So while we're uploading, let's just have a look at the finished product. There we go. Right, how are we done at this point? Because uh, we'll be going back to that in a minute. Right, let's get that off. Are you done? Oh, you're done. You've uploaded. Marvellous. Right, let's get you out of the way now. Who wants to see some magic? Let me know. How do you bring up the Unsplash? You go to, uh, let me let me show you. Let me show you. Publisher, you go to view. You go down to studio. You go down to stock. And your Unsplash, your Pexels and your Pixabay are in there. Okay, so magic. We wanted magic, didn't we? Let's do some magic. All right. I am starting the magic right now. I need to go into there and it's complaining. Uh, right, let's do that. Let's do some magic. Hello, iPad. Hello, iPad. There's my iPad. Right, let's make this big so you can see it. Although it does have a nasty little habit of um, rescaling itself. It annoys me, but it won't be told. Right, that's my iPad. Obviously, I do not have publisher for iPad. Publisher for iPad does not exist. That's not a problem, though. Brace yourselves. You can edit your publisher files today on the iPad if you have designer or photo. So I will go into designer. That's why I uploaded it to iCloud. So it's having a think about it. No files in here yet. You might notice if you've used this before, the interface has shrunk. Uh, the idea is it now works on the iPad mini. That's why the interface has shrunk. So I'm tapping that plus in the top right hand corner and I want to import from the cloud. I can either import or I can open from the cloud. Probably safest to import it though. So tap on import. And I have all kinds of stuff in here. But you know that I put that in the Affinity Designer folder, which has got quite a lot of stuff in it. Uh, so I can search for it as well. It was called Presidents. I've got, oh, look at all that. Got my Elvis Presley stuff in there, the lot. 
Uh, but where's my precedence thing? Here we go. President Sunday. Why have I got more than one? Oh no. Which is which? Oh, the original original. <laughs> Luckily, I know it's that one because I can tell from the time. Now, this has got to download the 140 meg that we've just uploaded on the other one. Right. Is it coming? It is indeed. Affinity Publisher for iPad will be with us in 2020. Or according to Affinity, it will be. So it absolutely is coming. They already confirmed that. They confirmed that yesterday. But you will need to know the trick to edit it right now. So let's download this and uh, let's see about what you can do to edit it. There is one little gotcha, and I don't know why they haven't mentioned this little gotcha. But hopefully we'll see the little gotcha uh, and then I'll be able to explain how to fix it. Right. I am going to be wrapping up shortly, seeing as though we, we've been going for an hour and 48 and, and people are looking at the video and thinking nobody could talk that long for Affinity, about Affinity Publisher. Sad thing is I probably could talk a lot longer, but never mind. So put your questions in there and I will deal with questions when we finish downloading this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, my internet connection is pretty fast. I think it's iCloud and the fact that I'm broadcasting that's upsetting it. But it's going and it's got 90 megs, so not, not too long to go. We are almost there. This app is definitely worth investigating. It is. Um, in terms of can it replace InDesign today, that depends on what you do with InDesign. And I, 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 what I mean by that is if you have specific pre-press requirements or you have to bundle something up or, you know, you do something very specific with it, maybe it's not quite there yet. But I would say to you, stay with it. They've worked miracles with it in the last 10 months while it's in beta. So the future is bright. Plus the fact you've got this studio link now where you can... It will just save so much time that you don't have to take the images out to edit them and bring them back in and all of that. You, It's just there. That is the new interface. Oh, come on. You're having a rare old think here, aren't you? Getting there, getting there. Should have picked a smaller file. But hey, since you can open a publisher file, can you start one too? Great question. You could, on your iPad, away from the office, start working on something in designer and you could then get back to the office and you could open that designer file in publisher and it becomes a publication i have actually done that i could show you that if you like i could show you that data merge is an essential for me um i was so disappointed when that wasn't there i only wanted two things the links and data merge uh, scripting would be very useful um, but data merge is an absolute essential as far as I'm concerned for getting rid of InDesign. <laughs> but as I said, from day one of the beta, I use this in anger, um, including I will I will go crazy and I'll go for the two hour mark and I will show you a file that started life in InDesign, was exported as a PDF was edited in Affinity Designer for two years and then taken from Affinity Designer into Affinity Publisher, sent for printing and printed. And I've got a printed copy in front of me. Right, we've got a problem there. That font isn't on the iPad. But apart from that, it has opened. But here's the trick. If we look, I can only see one page. Where's the rest? And that's the problem. That's the little gotcha. You need to go to the document menu, which is the one with the document and the three dots in the top left hand corner. You need to choose pages down the bottom. And when you do that, you have an extra little menu here at the bottom that says page one and page two and three and four and five and six and seven. So if I found that I had a problem, and obviously I have got a problem because I'm some fonts missing. But apart from that, if I'd found that, let's have a look. Uh, there was one of these. There was definitely one. of There we go. Our gin night. I'm to total, believe it or not. But uh, if you wanted to make a change to the price there, you see it's saying Australia and it knows. Uh, although that isn't Australia. It's this one. It's that one there. Uh, I could go in and I could edit that if I needed to. So um, 
I could do that on my iPad. And as I say, you've just meant that's a brilliant question, which is, um, can you start life on here and transfer it across? And the answer is you can. So just show you the rest of those pages there. So, yes, you could edit any of that that needed editing. You could add things to it, take things away from it, whatever you needed to do. And then when you've done, transfer it back and carry on working with it. So that was that bit of magic. Right. Let's close that down and let's show you this last thing. So let's get that out of the way. I'm an InDesign Power, Power User, Data Merge, Prepress, Multi-Profile Printing. Uh, yeah. I remember version one of InDesign. I remember buying a book about it and looking at the interface and thinking this doesn't do much, does it? Um, <laughs> it definitely needed a little bit of work, but obviously it's matured in the last 21 years. Um, I don't think it's going to take Serif Affinity that long. I think they will get there. Um, it doesn't support plugins at the moment. Uh, whether that's on their roadmap, I'm not quite sure. But let me show you the sad, sorry tale of the file that started life in InDesign. And I can actually show you, we've still, still got the webcam on here on another screen. I will show you the final thing. This one will probably blow your mind given where it was printed. So let me in here go show you something. Uh, we have the Munich brochure. Right. You will notice in here, there's two copies of this. There is the designer document and there is publisher. This was the one that finally went off for printing. But this one started life in InDesign and became a PDF. And I just wondered if I could open it. This is a couple of years ago. I think it's 2007, 2000, uh, 2017, I think it was. I just wondered if I could open a PDF and see it. And I could. And that was my document. It opened it up with an artboard for each page of the PDF. So bear in mind, this came from InDesign. It was then a PDF and it was then transferred into here. And there was all of the pages. And I did what I needed to do with it. And I sent it off for printing as a press ready PDF. But then and let's see if I can actually do it with this file. So I'm going to close that file down, minimize that, let's get that out of the way. What I did with it, with this file was I said open with publisher and I wondered what it would make of it. Do you want to convert to spreads? Hmm, sounds like a good idea. OK. And I ended up, pages are the wrong way around, but I ended up with an affinity publisher document that I could work with. Oh, wow. Uh, the pages came in backwards, uh, right? So we're looking at the end one first, but it came in. What I did with it then, right? So that was my starting point. Remember, InDesign PDF, affinity designer, finally publisher. And this was my finished copy of that, which is a dedicated publisher file. And my front cover is on the front cover. My next page is there. And as we go down, this isn't in the original. All these edits that you're looking at now were made in Affinity Publisher in January this year. These are the pages. I actually added in four extra pages. And everything got re-edited and restyled in here. It started life in InDesign. It went via a PDF to Designer for two years and then it landed in here. As you can see, it's now 12 pages. From here, it went back out to a print ready PDF. Let me see if I can find where you can actually see it. Oh, let me see if it's there. It's there somewhere. It's there on that website somewhere. So somewhere we've got photos. I will show you. Oh, I might not be able to find it on there. Oh, no, I'll ruin the demo. But never mind. I'll show you the finished product. So what we're looking at there. Let's get my webcam back, which is there. There it is. And that's the other one that I had on the table. I thought I might show you. There it is. And that one's printed much thicker. But there it is. 
And the reason that this one is so special, I didn't print this. This went off for printing to Manchester United. And Manchester United printed it for us. We run the Munich Memorial at Manchester United twice a year uh, to remember the players who died in the Munich air crash in 1958. And we make the brochure and we send it off to Manchester United and they print it for us. I don't think they know that they printed something from Affinity Publisher, but they did. Right. What's the PDF to publisher font support like? Does it on a line break? Um, I found it perfect. Um, I've not had any problems with it, uh, with the stuff I've imported. Your mileage may vary. I, I reckon it's going to depend on the font, etc., etc. Right. So that's it for the demo before. Yeah, now we're 58. Oh, it's unbelievable. Right. Let's do a very quick recap. Loads and loads and loads of features. We started off looking at the actual making of a new file. We went through the formats, the styles, the frames, the characters, the paragraphs. We looked at freebie images that we can get right from within Side Publisher. We looked at removing the interface with Control and W. Boom, interface disappeared. Tab takes away the rest of the interface. You will be needing to go and have a look at this from affinity.serif.com. Let me know in the chat if you're with me live. Have you got all of these apps? Affinity Publisher marks the, the third of, of the um, trilogy and we've waited a long time for it. It was worth the wait. It is cross-platform and if you join me late, it is going to come to iPad in 2020. I have got a load of videos, a ton of videos on Affinity products on YouTube. So subscribe um, to my channel, youtube.com slash Elaine Giles. The one you will want to watch first is that one if you've not seen it, which was the beta one. But I've done videos for every product they've released. So we've got Affinity Designer for iPad, for desktop. I've done photo. I've done photo for the iPad. I've done some dedicated ones, which is working with color in Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. Everything that's in both of those is just as applicable to Publisher. And I will do one on color in Publisher. But those are the applications that will change your design life. No joke. No joke. Affinity are amazing and the work that they're doing is amazing. So thank you for being with me. If I just hold on for another six seconds, we've done two hours. <laughs> so let's hold on for those six seconds and let's just do that. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you have, let me know. Contact me or leave me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know that you, you like that tutorial. And um, contact me. Let me know what you want to see. And um, I will do, I will do that. I love training. It's what I do and I really enjoy it. So thank you very much for being with me. If you have been with me live, we're going off into Q&A now, but, but blissfully for people on the, the replay, I might edit the video at this point and, and spare you the rest of it. Now we're into the third hour. But on the other hand, I might not, in which case you just have to press stop. Uh, so I'm going to go quiet for a little bit of a fraction of a second so I can get the edit out. Uh, probably better if I hadn't have told you that, wouldn't it? But never mind. Uh, if you're heading off now, I'll see you next time. But if you're still with me, right, give me some questions. Give me some questions. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Ah, I'm getting some positive feedback. That's fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Oh, and some likes as well. Thank you for that. Right, so has anybody got any more questions? Or did two hours did blow your mind? <laughs> You are all very, very, very welcome. Right. Who wants to see one on Colour in Affinity Publisher? Might as well do the third one. I've done the other two. Um, it's all about different colour palettes. Um, one of the problems that people said on the initial release of Publisher um, Photo and Designer was that it didn't have its own colour thing going on. And I thought you're right. And it's pretty primitive because it, it's hanging off the system. And I looked into it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It blew my mind. When Mike watched it, he went, I had no idea. And the working with colour in Affinity Photo is the my most pinned video. I have no idea why that one. Let's just put that up so you're not staring at my desktop. Um, 
I have no idea why that one, but it's pinnable. People love it. So we've got one, one call for that already. OK, yeah, two calls for that. OK, tell you what, I'll do that next. That will be my next video. There you go. But I need a little bit of a, of a rest at the moment. You've seen all those socials we've done. We've got two busy weeks coming up. But after that, there you go. Do I know if Serif are planning to add pub export? Um, I have no clue. One of the problems with this initial release for people who are trying to use it, um, are, are trying to transition from InDesign, is that the InDesign integration is not there yet. I mean, you saw it with the Word file. It was absolutely perfect. But unfortunately, in terms of InDesign, it's not quite there yet. But they have said that they are, that, you know, next on their roadmap is getting it to open InDesign files, etc. Um, support for other files really up to them. They do listen to requests. So it's worth tweeting them. It's worth putting in a ticket. I did that within a couple of days of the beta coming out. And I said, I need links. I can't do this without links. I, I, I need to use good grief. I need to use Keynote if I've not got links. And they said, OK, we're aware of that. Let's see how many others say the same. So I'm whipping up support. <laughs> you know, please tell them that we want links. Um, and they did. And it took them maybe three months. It was very rudimentary and primitive when it first came in. But you know what? It worked. Uh, it's much more polished now. But for me, if it's a print tool, no, you don't need the links. But if you're making interactive PDFs, you certainly do. And they added that. So I think... I know what you mean, EPUB for Kindle, etc. It's one of the things people are demanding. So hopefully uh, they will expand what that can do. I agree with you. I, I was expecting an export persona in the ilk of a designer. And I kept thinking in, in the beta, it will come, it will come, it will come. Um, and it didn't. So I'm hoping for a full export persona. And they already know that Kindle export and iBooks export and all of the digital formats are critical. They, they are aware of that. And I think that alongside the InDesign integration is going to be their focus, as well as making the iPad version as well. Uh, I did not see all the demo. What's the clipping path support like? Amazing. Uh, I didn't do all of that, uh, but it is amazing. You can certainly clip to all kinds of things. I tell you what, let's have a look at it. Um, hmm, frantically thinking how I can demo that quickly. All right, uh, you can here. Uh, let's get a new file. Let's start a new file. One of the things you can do in terms of shapes, and we've seen that one quite a lot, haven't we? Let's have another shape. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, no, we need we need something spectacular. Let's do a star one. All right. That's just a shape at that point. Uh, it's smart in that you can go in here. And you can edit this kind of thing. Well, you're supposed to be able to edit it. Come on. Why aren't you? There we go. Yeah, you can do all of that. But at the moment, it, it isn't doing much else, is it? But you can do magic things with that. So I'm going to put one up there, duplicate that down there and show you the first thing you can do right click on that and you've got your convert to curves as you would expect but you've also got convert to a picture frame and convert to a text frame so now you've got a star shaped text frame so we could literally put in there the quick brown fox and the fox jumped over the poor dog lazy dog there we go and duplicate there you go in fact, you know, I didn't even have to do that. What you can do when you've got a frame is go to text, insert filler text, and it will do it for you. Mine fitted better, but there you go. And this one up here that I've turned into a picture thing, you can there. Let's go get a picture. Where did my finder window go? Oh, I closed it. That wasn't clever of me, was it? Uh, mind you, I had finished the demo in, in my defence. <laughs> right, let's go and get my data. My data is there. President Sunday, pickies. Let's just randomly pick one. Let's pick, oh, the cake one. 
this we, we went out and we had some cake. So I'm dragging and dropping an image and it will clip it into there. And you've got all of the same options. You've got your zooms. So let's get it there. You've got this to drag it around so you can get it all in there. You can even do that and carry on editing it. It's amazing. Now, in terms of the original question, <laughs> which was clipping, uh, you can. One of the things they showed you on this demo, which was pretty stunning. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, pencil. Let's do that. You can even draw your own shape. So if you want some weirdy shape. So say we wanted, um, I'm not going to say this is Wales because it looks nothing like Wales. But if that was sort of an island or whatever, uh, you can turn that into a frame as well. So you can basically clip to anything. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea just how powerful it is. Let's go back to that and I will carry on answering questions. <sighs> right. Uh... Many scripts, written for InDesign, use grep styles a lot until I can do that. Well, grep is already in there. Let's see what it can do with the styles and stuff. I will have a look at that. Um, they are aware of that and they, they took the time to add that. And I remember saying to Mike, I can't believe they've added grep capabilities and there are no footnotes and endnotes in it. Not that I particularly use footnotes and endnotes, but that's not the point. It was I thought the grep would be far more difficult to add, but they did add it. Designers export persona took a while to understand and I love it. I was using Sketch at the time and what I loved about it was, in fact, if we go a little bit back further than that, I was using Fireworks. Who remembers that? Adobe Fireworks. They bought it from Macromedia and killed it. I was not pleased. I had a script. This script was 6,000 lines long and all it did was export my artwork at 10 different sizes. That was it. When I came to Sketch, Sketch allowed me to create an artboard and then export that as many times as I like in different sizes. And I loved it. But Sketch went activated per seat. And I thought, I want to use my software where I want to use it. And to be honest, I'm glad that I moved. But I moved. I um, switched to Affinity Designer and I struggled like heck with the export persona, thinking this makes no sense at all. But like you, I persevered with it. I adore it. I could not live without it. The export persona is nothing short of stunning in designer. If you don't understand it and you'd like a session on that, let me know because I love talking about that. that that's my favourite feature. Absolutely love it. Tagging and script labelling would be helpful. It would. And I'm sure it will come. This, as they said yesterday, this is their words, not mine. It is absolutely only the start. And the way they've gone, when you think four years ago, they released their first um, Mac based product, because before that they did do play page plus. Um, I actually kn knew about Serif in 1994, 1992 to 1994, when I was on a PC and I won a competition in a magazine and I won a copy of um, page plus, I think, and uh, they're, they're one of their other apps. And I thought it was a really good app. But when they started bringing the stuff out for the Mac, it was unbelievable. And obviously now it's cross-platform, which these days it needs to be. Nobody really cares anymore what your platform is. I've got a Windows machine. I've got a virtual machine. Uh, Mike's got a Surface. So he actually edited that President Sunday thing this morning. He hasn't even bought the Mac version yet. He installed the version that he did bring by on his Surface and he took the file with him. In fact, because the sh the sharing is so shocking on iCloud, we actually piggybacked our files on Google Drive and we worked on the files together. Right, let's have a look. Uh, just a photo plus pub. That's all you want, is it? That's it. That's absolutely it. <laughs> uh, oh, your wife writes novels. I'm interested. T tell me more. Tell me more. A tutorial explaining all of the overwhelming number of typography would be very welcome. OK, I will make sure that I have a note of that. The typography is stunning uh, and linking in with the styles, as you saw, where you can do layouts. There was one little demo. I didn't have the ch a chance to do it. Um, I actually pointed out to you that the first word of every stave was in capitals. The style can even handle that. So I could do styles and text, couldn't I? That would be a good one. OK. Oh, good, sweetie. I'm glad you're excited. 
Have you bought it yet? Fireworks and freehand. Ah, oh, fireworks was amazing. It wasn't for print. It didn't have a print option. It was Macromedia made it to make web graphics and it was amazing at what it did. Adobe binned it and they, they now make, oh, what's it called? Um, XD. Um, and it's for interface design. But no, fireworks was best. Do you know, do you think that when iPad OS comes out, Affinity will have multiple windows like the desktop? I'd imagine they would because I'm, I'm assuming that's supported at system level. If you want to see that in action right now, even without upgrading to the iPad OS, you can see it with Ulysses. Ulysses is already doing that where you can open multiple windows to give you two views of the same document or compare two documents or compare a document you're working on and um, a preview of it. And it is fabulous. As many tutorials as I care to show you. OK, then I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. An export persona demo would be fantastic. OK, I have demoed that a couple of times. What I've not done is actually just do an export demo. Because <laughs> if I add it with something else, we end up at 2 hours 13 and we're still going. So, yeah, I can do an export persona. I use that every week to do graphics and export them at different sizes. but. It's stunningly powerful. It's just not very accessible. OK, glad you could be with us, Royston. I'm not surprised you've got to go. I'll have to go shortly. <laughs> it is a good app, Niels. It, it really is. I think Affinity, Affinity Publisher feels like the glue that's glued the three apps together to become a suite. Um, and I mean, they, they said um, studio. They use the word studio and I thought that's the first time I've never actually heard them say Affinity Studio, but it really is a, a studio, a suite now. It is. Couldn't wait. You own them all. So, so do I. I intend to buy this one twice for crying out loud. <laughs> In fact, three times because I've got the Windows version as well. They sorted me out with the Windows version. Freehand was way before your time. Freehand was around in the 80s, I think. I didn't use Freehand too much. I used to use Corel Draw which incidentally is now available for the Mac. Before you get excited, it's around £500 a year. It's subscription. It's hideous. It's so expensive. Um, I think maybe the 500 is a purchasable one. It was, uh, let me think. Oh, I know. It was eighteen ninety nine a month just for one app. Hideous. Uh, does this app support colour profiles and separation spot colour? Um, it it's colour stuff. I, I, I think so. I think so. But don't quote me. I think so. I think I didn't see it there because I didn't choose the mode that had that active. I think it does. I'd have to check though properly. Uh, can you preview RGB colour or CMYK? Okay. I believe you can. Again, I stuck with RGB only because I was printing it out myself. The one that went off to Manchester United was CMYK. Uh, that was printed off at, at some bureau or other via their... Um, print department. <laughs> can you make a video for beginners and for advances? I can certainly do that. Um, check out the one, the video that I did for the beta. There was a lot of stuff in there that took you through from the very beginning. Um, I think what would be better, I mean, what happened with this one was I thought, oh, it's out that day. I'll do it the day after. That's what I'll do. And I started getting deeper and deeper into it, thinking, how am I going to squeeze this into a demo? There's so much to see. I think it would be a good idea if I took a project and actually took you through making an entire project from the very beginning, how to make the, the, the initial setup, how to edit the setup, that. So I could do project based demos. That would probably work well. Do you need three apps? You do if you want the full integration between them. Uh, that was what I was talking about when I talked about this um, studio link. I'm not sure what you'd see if you didn't have the two other apps installed. I'm guessing you'd see that message that asked you to purchase them. So you would have a certain basic. Well, you'd have all of the publisher tools, but if you didn't have designer or photo, you wouldn't be able to switch modes and then just edit seamlessly. Uh, all of them at the moment. So it's not just publisher that's got 20% off at the moment. They all have. 
So everything that Serif sell is 20% off right now. So now would be a very good time to buy the others if you don't already have them. They are 20% off in all of the app stores and they're 20% off direct from Serif. So now is a very good time to buy. I intend to head off to their store tomorrow um, and look at the fonts and assets that they have. Um, I buy those and then I use them in demos. You can make a video, yeah, I've done that one. Uh, that's what I got for updating the other apps. Okay, so do we have any more questions? The chat's been lovely tonight. It's been great you've been chatting away. Yep, I mentioned that at the beginning. Um, that's exactly what happened to me. It said it wasn't installed. It needs to be 1.7.1. And what happened was they, they put that in the app store. They had it ready to go yesterday. But when I did my update before I bought Publisher, it, it wasn't the right version. I needed the version that was released after they released Publisher. So make sure wherever you've bought it from, you are up to date with 1.7.1 and then you shouldn't see that message. What are your thoughts on Photoshop for iPad, even though it's not released yet? Do you think Affinity Photo for iPad will still be leagues ahead? I actually do, because what happened with Affinity was they already had a full suite of apps and some of the developers went to the management with a vision. And they said last night, what we've got now is the beginning of that vision. <coughs> what Adobe keep doing is changing their mind. They don't seem to have a vision. It just seems to be, can we get Photoshop on the iPad? And they're not taking into account that the iPad has a different interface and a different ideology, a different way of working. They're not going back to the drawing board and starting again. Affinity did do that. Their vision is incredibly clear. They have said in the past that the applications share 80% of their code. And that makes for fast development. So I think it will still be leagues ahead. From what I recall, won't you also need a subscription for all of the features on iPad? So I think Affinity, um, Adobe need to come into the real world with the rest of us. I also tend to avoid subscription software, although having said that, there are some exceptions. I pay for Ulysses on subscription. Um, what else do I have on subscription? I have Microsoft Office on subscription. Because Office is, if you consider that the storage space you get on OneDrive would be X price, then the price that that storage would be anywhere else means that you get Office for free. So I don't mind paying a subscription for Office because I think it's good value. But when you consider your Office subscription, I pay £48 a year for Office and six terabytes of storage. My Adobe subscription is 600 and odd pounds and I don't get anything like the utility from it. So it's going as soon as I can get rid of it. Um, yes, you do need to open them. Um, I, mine was twofold. I needed the very latest versions and I needed to open them. But I thought it was worth putting in the presentation at the beginning because I, I saw people on Twitter playing holy heck that they couldn't get it working. And I thought, well, you, you need to update and then you need to run it. Um, they should have me on their payroll. Do you know what, John? I didn't even get invited to the launch yesterday. I think that's shocking behaviour. <laughs> but I did sit here with my feet up and a magnum ice cream while I watched it. So I thought, well, at least you're comfortable. <laughs> I think the shared file format was the main vision and it has enabled it to leverage the rest. Can it be used with the pages document? Do you know, I was going to try that. I was going to try that um, and I didn't get a chance. Let's see if it will. Um, let's get a text frame on here. Let's share the desktop again and let's see if it will take a pages file. Let's get rid of that. Let's get a text frame in there. I'm reckoning not, but I will show you a way to do it. I will show you a way to do it. So I've got my text frame there. Next, I need a pages file. So let's make a new one, new one, a new blank one. And just for speed, I'll go and get the text of A Christmas Carol. Not only is A Christmas Carol a fabulous book, but at 26,000 words, it's manageable for demonstrations. 
So I will go and get a few paragraphs of text and put that in here. So this is going to be, when I've finished, format shocking. Uh, this will be, so I will put on my desktop. No, desktop, desktop. Right, um, I'll call it Xmas. That's a native pages file. So let's see if I go to file place, will it place it? My money's on no. No, it's dimmed out. It won't. But here's what you could do. You've got two options from pages. One option is file export to and choose Word because we know it will do that. So if I export that, put that on the desktop while we're at it, call that Xmas, that'll be fine. Another thing you could do is now you would do this if, if you were bothered in the slightest about the format. That's shocking. Oh, I can't look at that. It's bad. Right. Let's make it have a near and let's make it a bit bigger so we can actually read it. And should we make it a color as well? Mm, there we go. Right. If I export that as a PDF. And we'll put that on the desktop. We'll call that Xmas as well. So we've got all different formats. We go back in here. We should then be able to place the Word file. So that's the Word file. I've got my iPad on my desk and I can't see the open button. <laughs> right, so it's open that. So, yep, that's worked and that's all editable, etc. Let's undo that. And let's see if we can place the PDF. There it is. That's the PDF. Can't see it's the PDF. But if it's blue, hey, it's the PDF. And there we go. So we've got that in. Uh, let's squeeze that down. And there's the PDF. So a couple of ways to get it in from pages if that's what you need to do. Right, let's get back to those questions. Oh, where am I? Right. Um, £48 a year for office. Is it on the website? No, it's not. What I do is I go to Amazon. And every couple of months, Black Friday sale for sure, um, February time, and I think I last saw it around May, they have they have a daily deal section. And every two to three months, they have Office in a box, an Office subscription for £48. You get in the box a little code. And you just apply that to your Microsoft account. The normal price of that is something like £80 a year. But I get it for almost half. Just keep your eye out on Amazon for an offer on um, the box with the code in it. They will send you an empty box with a piece of paper in it. It's criminal. Um, and you just redeem it and you get it really cheap. Why not a complete switch to Affinity right now? Curious, you still need Adobe. It's the odd item and it's definitely not worth the subscription. Um, one issue I've got is all the files that I've got from the last 20 odd years, which I just haven't had a time to convert. Obviously, Affinity Photo will open photos, uh, Photoshop files, and Designer will open Illustrator files. The InDesign files are more of an issue. I also have used over the years um, Adobe Audition for audio editing. So we don't as yet, who knows what they've got planned. We don't as yet have video editing software from Affinity or audio editing software. And I was using that. I have since switched my audio editing and I was never a really a big user of Premiere to start with. So basically the only thing that's left is InDesign. And as soon as I can, I will. And when you click the other personas, are you in 50% of photo or designer or 100%? Um, well, your menu says Affinity Publisher, but everything else that you work with is 100% of the other app. That's what was so amazing about it. Can Affinity Publisher import word character styles? Oh, character styles. Now, it does import styles. Um, I, I guess so. I haven't checked it to that level. But you know what? I'm liking the idea of doing a thing about styles and text. So that's one of the things that I can check for that. I'll absolutely check that for you. Ah, oh, Paul, you're late. <laughs> Will you manage the replay? Where are we at with the replay? We are two hours 26 in. Oh, fabulous. We got a bit carried away, Paul. We had a fabulous, fabulous time. 
Would now be a good time to mention we've also got an after hours tomorrow night. <laughs> um, amazing Windows and Mac. I suppose you can use the same file. You can. Yes, I did that today. That file that we looked at, that President Sunday one with all of the photos in, it started life on my Mac. Um, I made a PDF of it, but in case there was any changes needed, when I sent it to Mike, who was taking it for printing, I said to him, here's the PDF I've created and here's the original file. He put it on his surface and there were two changes he wanted to make. So he made the changes on his Windows machine, recreated the PDF, and it went off for print. It's exactly 100% compatible between Windows and the Mac. The only issue we stumbled across, and that was because it was a Surface and not a main desktop machine, was it didn't have the fonts on it. So what I then did was packaged up the fonts for him and he installed the fonts on his Surface and then he was good to go. You saw on the iPad when I did that bit of magic um, that there was a font missing. But you can install any fonts you need straight within designer on your iPad or photo and you wouldn't then have that problem. So yes, it is 100% of the same file. So, so far we've um, had requests for colour in Affinity Publisher. We've had styles and text in Affinity Publisher, export persona, anything else. Let me know. Let me know. Um, I will be planning the autumn stuff sooner rather than later. So let me know. Uh, performance difference compared to InDesign, like they advertise. Um, hmm, let me think. I would say they all the Affinity apps work great. The only time I've ever seen a slowdown is when I have created a designer file with hundreds and hundreds of file of um, artboards in it. And the reason that I've done that is because I wanted to do a, a sort of semi mail merge thing. Um, I done pages for like a bullet journal. I find InDesign quite clunky and slow, but I would, my biggest complaint with InDesign is the clunkiness of it. I always find with Affinity applications, it's logical. And even if I don't particularly know the shortcut key for something, I'll, I'll try it. And it'll, it, it feels like a native Mac app, whereas I, I find InDesign does not. But I appreciate InDesign is incredibly powerful and publisher. It might be 90 percent of the way there. It's going to depend if the 90 percent of the way there it is, is the 90 percent you use. If the majority of your work is the 10 percent that it, it can't do, then no, you're not going to be able to switch just yet. What the industry update will be. Uh, freelancers, uh, studios are going to be the big problem. Um, whether they will or not in the end, well, maybe they will come around to the beauty of you own it and you don't need to be concerned about licensing things forever and a day. Maybe, maybe. I just find InDesign very, very, very clunky. It's very powerful, but very clunky. Uh, that's why that file the Munich one that went off to Manchester United. That's why I wanted it out of InDesign. But I did feel it was a little bit too soon for me to try and get it out of InDesign. It was a punt. I decided I was going to make the press ready PDF and then just try and open it in Designer. And I was amazed when it worked. And as I said, for two years, I've edited it in Designer and made a print ready PDF. And this year, I said to Mike, when it, when it came out um, in beta, I said, oh, it's going to be out by February. It's going to be fabulous. I'll redesign the whole thing. And February was coming nearer and nearer and nearer and it wasn't out. And I said, I don't know if I dare send this to, to print. I mean, if I was printing it, fine. But, you know, I'm sending it to the repro graphics department at Manchester United. I can't have a mistake. And I thought it would be insane to try doing it in a beta. And I thought, I'll just see if it'll open it. <laughs> you know how you are. I'll just try a little bit. Uh, and I did. And it opened it. And I went to, I just said to Mike, I'm moving it. And he went, this has got to go to press in, in, in two days. And I said, I know, but I'm moving it. And I did. And everything just came together very, very quickly. Whereas I think with InDesign, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Um, as a PDF tool, well, you saw that I had imported it as a PDF. And it came in completely editable. It was nothing short of amazing. Uh, 
I can just show you before we go. You want to see something else? <laughs> let's let's show you something else. This that we've got in, in here. In fact, let me do another file. Uh, let me do... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want you. No, 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 no. Not you. Another one of these. Right. That is a new file. There's nothing there at all. If I go back and hopefully I've got a PDF of the Munich brochure. And do you know what? I actually haven't. Oh, you swine. Um, I've got one of President Sunday. Let's have a look at that. I have the programme for President Sunday as a PDF. There it is. Let me, no, not you. I'm trying to get this full screen. Um, the other monitor's bigger. That's the problem. Let's move it across here and try that. That's the President Sunday file. It is a PDF at the top there. It says it's a PDF. There's all the pages. Now, obviously, it started life in Publisher, but let's just leave it. All right. Leave that alone. It's a PDF. It doesn't matter. If I go into here and I go to File, Place, and I go and choose that PDF. So let me just hook into that folder. So it's the President Sunday program PDF and open it up. It's loaded it into the cursor, at which point I can draw out where I would like that. Now, obviously, I've got a font issue there, but that font was very dicey to start with. Very dicey. Issue you've got with that is where's the rest of it? There were eight pages. No, there were 12 pages. Where's the rest of it? Well, when you've got your move tool selected and you look at your context sensitive toolbar up here, you have different pages and there are all of the pages. So the support for PDF is fabulous. That was what enabled me to be able to go in and edit that file that came from InDesign via PDF, via designer into publisher and get it off to print. So um, I did that. That's great as far as I'm concerned. Right, where are we up to now? Performance differences, industry update. Uh, da, 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 da. Two months in design market will be supported. That's great. I'm surprised in a way they didn't leave release until then. They must have something else going on that they picked this point, which can only be good for the rest of us. Uh, open some package artwork, see how it works. That's great, Bill. Let me know how it works. We've had a rare old night tonight chatting and, and loads and loads and loads of demo. So let's keep up this dialogue and uh, let's let's share how we're working with it. That's what we should do. Now, if anybody is interested, I'm sure Paul will be interested. Um, how did you guys find me tonight? Was it a mail via my mailing list? Was it via YouTube? Or do you just know me? Or did you find it on Twitter? Let me know. Let me know. Um. Because I also do another show on a Friday night. I do. Um, it's about two hours. We do demos of all Mac stuff. It's Mac things. Affinity Publisher will get a mention tomorrow, but it won't be all about that. But if, if you have a play with it tonight, pop in for five minutes tomorrow on my channel and just let me know how you got on with it. Um, it's much, it's, it's less, what would you say? It's less tutorially, more chatty. We just, we just basically have a Friday night party is what we do. An online Friday night party. So pop in and let me know how you're getting on. Um, uh, have they explained how they'll handle upgrades? Upgrades, they charge a flat fee. You pay the price, which is $38.99 today or $39.99, and you don't pay again until version two. Every time they have a new release, they have put the price down by 20%. That's been historically what they've done, and that's why it's that price. The proper price is 30 48.99 or 49.99 um that's so it's got 20 percent off at the moment upgrades is going to be interesting because they have to handle people who have bought via the app store as well as via their own store so i think that's why they give just a ballpark 20 percent off to everybody what's the best way to contact me uh you can contact me via my email you should. My email is out there. I'm also on Twitter. Um, my email is Elaine G at rosewaygiles.co.uk, which you saw before. But there's a contact form on my website. So Elaine Giles.co.uk and uh, just fill in the form. 
Yep, Twitter, email, Facebook. I've been, now, now, leave Facebook alone with the messages because I'm useless with it. <laughs> I pop in every six months and think, oh, oh, somebody sent me a message. I'm not good with Facebook. But I am on LinkedIn, I am on Twitter, I am on email, I am on YouTube. You can get me all those ways. Yep, you're saying that um, everything up to version two will be free. Yep, they've already set, stated that that's their policy. For four years, they've been giving us free updates to designer and they're at 1.7 with that. I, I am quite happy to throw money at them. Uh, just keep them going. They also announced yesterday, if you missed it, um, at, at the point they released the beta of Publisher, they had a million users worldwide. And they announced last night that in the last 10 months, that's gone to 2 million. I do hope Adobe are worried. <laughs> oh, you searched for Affinity Publisher and found it live. In that case, Drown the Witch, you need to go back and check the other video that I did, the one for the beta. There was a load more stuff on that. And you got a mail alert. That's good. That's good. The last map by it's live. So you were with us for that, Paul. That's excellent. <laughs> you thought it was the original one. Oh, wow. No, this has been the update one. And you're new to it all. Oh, I'm glad you watched the Affinity Life. The Affinity Life was well worth watching. I know we've had a lady, we've had somebody on here before who was saying I had no sound and I had no sound at the beginning. Oh, dear. Best live video you've ever seen. Thank you very much. That's, that's wonderful to hear. It means a lot that. I went in and I checked my comments the other day and sometimes you, you honestly wish that you haven't. The one at the top said, very annoying voice. And I thought, thanks for that. Did you enjoy the tutorial? So I went down the list and there was another one and it said, absolutely fabulous. Love your voice. And I just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I am not to everybody's taste, apparently, but I'm glad that you're here with me and I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. And my comments do give me a laugh at times. They keep me grounded, put it like that. <laughs> How many machines can a user have one user license on? Good question, Bill. Right. If, it's, if you've bought it from the App Store, Apple's policy is as long as you're logged in with your Apple account, you can have it on as many as you like. I'm not sure what Microsoft store policy is, but that's Apple store policy. From Affinity, they give you a license and you need to verify that license at the point of install. I would imagine there is a cutoff point where they get a little bit concerned how many activations there are on it, but I have no idea what point that is. That was why much earlier I said, when I, when I have an app that's mission critical to me, mission critical to me, I am prepared to buy it direct from the developer and in the app store. And my rationale for that is if I buy it direct from the developer, I get the fastest updates. But if I have an emergency where I need to get it installed now and I've got a problem with the licensing, maybe the licensing server isn't working, then I can install it via the store. And that's what I do. There's very few apps I do that with. Um, one traditionally has been ScreenFlow because obviously in my game, I use that a lot. Uh, one is Camtasia. That's what I've switched to. And the other is the Affinity apps. Those are the ones that I do that with. I have actually been forced to move one out of the app store because it stopped working. And that one was called um, Pro Audio Converter. So there literally is maybe four apps that I do that with. But for me, it's worth it. But I think... It has been said, any Mac, any computer you own. But then I guess that depends if you're like Mike, working at a company with 65,000. I think they'd be a little bit upset with that. <laughs> it's per person. Can you see Affinity Live now? You can. If you search YouTube for Affinity Live, there is a replay available. It's about 45 minutes. <laughs> They've not got the length that we've got. We're heading into two hours, 45 minutes. Uh, but it was very good. It was definitely worth seeing. One user, any of the user's computers. That's what they say they do. I, I'm wondering at what point that would be a problem. Um, but they, they certainly at the moment not had much of a problem with it. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, one I have had an issue with was Scrivener. Their licensing server wouldn't verify my license, but they did let me carry on using the application. But it's a minefield these days. And if I see somebody's selling stuff via Paddle, I start to panic because Paddle have their own licensing servers and the developer has to tell them how many activations, etc. And I at times have had to contact developers to get them to get Paddle to reactivate a license that, that's been terminated. Love your voice and your English. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. 
Yep, it is available. I think it's available on their site as well. How long did it take you to learn? Aha, well, um, I got the beta as soon as it came out last August. I've used it since. But all of this new stuff that came out, I got my hands on it at four o'clock yesterday. Four o'clock yesterday. And I worked till about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, trying everything, making sure it was working. And that file that you see, that President Sunday one, I actually made that. Um, I've still got that showing, haven't I? I? I did the entire file while I was prepping the session. That's what I did. So um, it, it doesn't take long if you've, I think it's cumulative. When I very first started DTP, I hadn't got a clue what anything was. As you learn there's this feature, there's text on a path and there's frames and there's this and there's that. You start with the next application looking for it and it's easier. So it's faster for me probably than somebody starting out, but only because I've got years of experience with other applications that do a similar job. Do I have a ScreenFlow tutorial? I absolutely do. I do. It's on my channel. I've got two, I think. One was for version seven and one was for eight. So there's a couple of tutorials on there. That was a Marmite tutorial, that one. Um, the last one I did on ScreenFlow, people either loved it or loathed it. I have no idea why. Uh, one person said they didn't like the intro at the beginning because it was too long. And I thought the intro at the beginning was like all of four minutes. And it was explaining why you might want to buy it this way or that way. You love it or loathe it, apparently. But yes, there is a whole tutorial there on that. I'm thinking, did I do one on Camtasia? I talked about why I've switched to Camtasia on an a Mac Bytes After Hours. There is a playlist on my YouTube channel called Mac Bytes After Hours. Um, if you look at the running order underneath the, the video, it will tell you which one. Do you know what? You contacted me on Twitter, didn't you? Ping me on Twitter and I'll ping you a link back to the tutorial I did about Camtasia and why I switched. And there's two tutorials on ScreenFlow as well. I tend to buy via the App Store just for pure convenience of it. Yeah, and the family sharing. I don't use family sharing. Uh, I had a look at it and you couldn't share in app purchases, which was a bit of a downer for me. Um, but we decided we'd just keep everything separate. So Mike and I buy separate licenses. Yeah, I think I don't think there's a freelancer on the planet who doesn't love Affinity, if only for the fact they've poked Adobe and Adobe now have to shift themselves rather than sitting on their laurels. <laughs> but I know very many people use it because, you know, if your output's print ready PDF, it works fantastically. It really works amazingly. Scrivener tutorial. Done a Scrivener, tutor Scrivener tutorial. Done two. Did um, Scrivener version three when it came out. And I did the iOS version the day that came out because I was on the beta program. So I was able to do it very early. So what you need to do is go to my channel and just search for Scrivener and you'll find them there. You've got skills. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very lucky. I have a job that I absolutely adore. Um, I didn't always have a job that I adored. Some of you will know what my job was before. And I did not enjoy my job. Um, I went all through school and came out of school and I had two choices. I, I was thinking of doing the law. And my mother said to me she was the first female computer programmer in the UK back in the 50s. And she said, I think you should work with computers. And I said, I think I should be a lawyer. Guess what? Mum was right. <laughs> I went to London to read law. I went on and did a postgrad at Oxford. I then went on to a, a, the College of Law in Chester and I became a lawyer. And I was a lawyer for two to three years and I hated every second of it. And mum was right. So I requalified um, as a Microsoft certified systems engineer. And then that, that's the technical end, the very technical end. And then I decided I loved teaching people and not many people wanted to know about systems engineer stuff. But, hey, I can I can wire a mean network. I can. Um, but I, I started I, I knew a lot of software anyway, and I started doing more and more software. And I absolutely love what I do. I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. Let's put it like that. Oh, Liverpool. I was in Liverpool about three weeks ago. I was there for a conference. I was there for three days, had an absolute ball. Been a couple of times before, but I managed to see more of it this time. We went to St George's Hall, which is near the museum. Fabulous place. Loved that. We had dinner at the Adelphi, 
We then the next day had dinner out at Aintree Racecourse, which was also fabulous. And then we headed over to Rainford, where we went to Lavender Farm, um, which they had a Dogs Trust fun day. And we had an absolute blast there as well. So I loved it, loved it. And it was really nice to see um, Liverpool were well into the swing of the football at the time. Not that Mike appreciated that, being a United fan. Um, but I thought it was lovely to see all the flags flying. And there was Everton ones. That I saw Goodison Park for the first time. Never been to a football match over there. The only thing that I missed and I really wanted to go and see was um, the Hillsborough Memorial. And I wanted to go see it because I worked on the case. But when I worked on the case, they hadn't built the memorial and I wanted to go and uh, pay my respects. I didn't get a chance to do that. So I'll definitely be going back to do that. You are very welcome. Uh, Mum's always right. You're quite right. She was absolutely spot on, wasn't she? When you open Publisher and press new document, there are options for columns and gutters. There are. There are. Let me show you that. Let's go back to my iMac. I think Mike's here. <laughs> We've been talking that long. Mike's back. Are you, is that you? Oh, he's there somewhere, I'm sure. Well, either that or somebody's just walked in and then it's not Mike, which would be quite concerning. Right, we have here. Let's have a look. Um, I thought there were. I thought there was options. What were the options you're looking for? Um, columns and gutters. I thought there were. Hang on. Let's have a look. Uh, doesn't look like it. All right. There is options for margins. I'm guessing column wise, this would be why. Let's get a new file. And you've got these master pages and you can put on these master pages, you can put your text frames. And in your text frames, you can put your filler text so we can see it. And then you can format your text frame. So we had that open, didn't we? I think I closed it. View Studio a text frame, which is all of this. And this was where you could set up your gutter and your columns. So instead of setting it up at that level, which is the document level, you set it up at master page level. So that's how you would do that. Uh, I'm glad I followed my passion as well. I am. I am. I am very, very lucky. And I'm lucky to be able to share it with everybody as well. It is Mike. He's back. We're still live. We've got Paul with us on the gang. I said after an hour. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, Mike's been watching me as well. And I said, should we carry on? This was about an hour 20 in and it was yes, 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 yes. Can you imagine the snotograms I'm going to get in the comments of people? This is far too long. I can't watch that. I want a six minute tutorial. And at the end of it, I want to know everything. I get comments like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But you know what? I'm going to blame you guys. Oh, you encouraged me to carry on and carry on. I think we've had a ball. I think we've had an absolute blast. Hopefully some of you will make it tomorrow night um, to the after hours, which is it's I was trying to explain what after hours is and it was very difficult. It's sort of Mac stuff with a lot of humour. Well, I do a podcast as well. I do a podcast called Mac Bites, which is all Mac things. If you've never given that a listen. That's well worth a laugh. <laughs> we have two iPhones talking to each other. They're the stars of the show, I'm telling you. Uh, page layout designs like objects. Ooh, I'll have to have a look at that. I will have to have a look at that. It doesn't look like it from that file new. Um, unless there's different options, unless there's different options when you go to different settings in here, like press ready, but I'm not seeing it. I am not seeing that. Uh, <laughs> no, I've got margins and I've got bleed. I do not seem to have other things. I will have a look at that and we'll find out. All right, so, uh, well, you could always download the trial. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it, Bill. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Lovely to talk to you. You can always, if you want to know more about the stuff that I'm doing in the future, sign up to my newsletter, which is elainegiles.com slash VIP. Uh, you can find that at the end of any of my videos. Um, or just, just mail me. Just mail me. Just go to the website and send me a mail. Everybody should send me a mail and ask me at least one question. And that way we've got some stuff to come back to and do another one with. However, um, now, is it Andrew? I'm wondering what the T stands for. But Andrew's interested. Well, Andrew's got about 15 hours of tutorials now keyed up to watch because every every time he said there's this one and I've done one. Uh, 
I've done Scrivener, I've done Scrivener for iOS, I've done um, ScreenFlow, I've done ScreenFlow for iOS. I'm not iOS, um, ScreenFlow. I did, I did two one. I did two. Ah, you're on Twitter, right. Well, ping me on Twitter and then I can follow you back. Can't say fairer than that, can I? Right, do you want to say hello, Mike? Hello. Uh, you'll have you'll be on my microphone. You're not on yours. I'll cut you off. Oh, right. <laughs> you'll have to come over to here and say hello to everybody. You're very welcome. Hello. Right, excellent. You're very welcome, Sven. Right, I think we better call it a night before we hit the three-hour mark, haven't we? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy them, Andrew. I do. So uh, anybody who's on here wants to... Meet up with me on Twitter, ping me on Twitter, and uh, we can follow each other. That would be excellent. So, uh, last call for questions. I'm assuming we are all questioned out, but if not, let me know. I've got at least three ideas for new tutorials that you want to see, and I'm sure there's scope for um, project-based stuff for Affinity Publisher. And I'm sure as they bring out extra features, we can revisit that as well. And I'm pretty confident the list I had in front of me that I didn't end up sticking to in the slightest. Uh, there was a load of stuff on there that I've not actually covered as well. Because as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking you are never going to squeeze all this in, woman. You're not. No. Well, well, we'll do some project-based demos. That's the best way forward. Right. <laughs> I'm loving that, Spence. My my mum can't believe I just spent watching three hours on a DTP programme. And that's on top of the hour and a half that the other one is that you may or may not have seen yet. But it's exciting, isn't it? It's nice when they bring out applications that you really think have got a strong future and that can help you do your job. Anything that enables you to do your job, got to be a good thing. It's got to be a good thing. I mean, this year, um, with what Mike's doing, I've got a lot of printing, publishing and documents to create. And I, I'm i finding it quite stressful that there's that many of them. But if I had to use InDesign for that, I'd, I'd give, I've given up the will to live way before now. So uh, I'm quite happy that I'm using this one. And every document that pushes you a little bit further and a little bit further, um, you find out what, what the application is capable of. And it's I saw a comment on, on a video. It wasn't one of mine. Um, and it said, it's very primitive. And I thought, do you know what? It's only as primitive as you choose to let it be, because the integration with designer and photo, there are things it doesn't do. But primitive is unkind because there's things that it does that the Adobe apps don't do. They're, they're nowhere near. So from that perspective, if it doesn't do five things that I need it in air quotes to do, I can guarantee the 95 things it does do saves me enough time that I can find another way to do the other five that it doesn't. Right. I have to watch the replay. <laughs> I wonder if Sven will make his mum watch the replay. That could be good. <laughs> oh, first live session. Excellent. Excellent. Right. I tend to go live about this time, which is eight or nine o'clock my time, which is noon PT to one PT. And um, is it? It's three, three to four Eastern. There you go. Right. Project based, I promise. OK, I've got lots of projects coming up. So project based, not going to be a problem. Not going to be a problem. Good night. Good night. You're very welcome. <laughs> Unicorns are waiting. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, John. That's great. Well, I'm going to head off. I, I am not going to pass the three hour mark or YouTube will start charging me or something. <laughs> No, we're going to head off now. We always head off to have something to eat. So I'm hoping for a very nice fruit salad. And I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're going to have a wonderful rest of the night or a wonderful rest of the day. And um, I will see you next time, which is tomorrow if you want a bit of a laugh. Other than that, sign up to the newsletter or follow me on YouTube and you'll get a ping. Hit that um, notification icon and you will be notified when I am going live. And the next time I am going live is going to be with something affinity-ish. Can't say fairer than that. OK, Sven, thank you very much. Goodbye. It has been great. I've really enjoyed your company. Thank you very much, people. Thank you. So it's good night from me. It's good night from me. Mike says good night. Good night from both of us. And we'll both see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>